on you. You want to show off your fancy letter? You didn't make a ding noise. He's not easy yet. Look at those flames spitter and spatter. I don't get the point of the double flame. You gotta lower that. Yeah, yeah, it's gotta be lowered for sure. The double flame gets a... Uh... Jeez. You are tuning in to the Cigar Guys Podcast, where aficionados and newcomers alike gather to explore the vast cigar universe. Meet your host, Alexander Gonzalez, Mark Nikolai, his big little brother, Zachary Nikolai, and Jared Burroughs. So, sit back, light up, and let's get the conversation started. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Cigar Guys Podcast. We are in a remote location, a remote state, a totally different state, actually. We're in Michigan. Uh, We flew here to do a podcast at one of our favorite cigar lounges, Don Cristo Cigars in Shelby Township, Michigan. Uh, they sell the base of cigar here. We're doing a cut and light tonight. I'm going to show you some clips of that too. We're going to be talking to the owners and a few other special guests that are going to be in rotation. So this is going to be a very special episode and we're going to share more details as we talk with the owners and amongst ourselves. Uh, but that's kind of the setting that's going on here. So I'm here right now, of course, with Zach, Zachary Nikolai. You may recognize him from a previous episode. If you've been with us for a while, and then across the row we've got Mr. Producer. That's confusing, Mr. Producer Mark Nikolai. Mark and I've been producer Jared Burrows, rocking the new gold Dupont lighter, which we can take a second to talk about. Oh, uh, so actually, um, okay. <laughs> you pause. Go I got He is the producer. I figured out last night how to blow an O ring with a cigar. Really? But you got to do it when you first light it. Okay. So when you first light it, you you know you light it or whatever, and then right after you're done lighting it, you just do a quick little puff outside of the cigar, and it makes like a perfect circle. Oh, I've done that before. Yeah. So you're blowing it out of the cigar, uh, not out yeah. of the out of the cigar, and it blows okay. a perfect circle. Yeah. All right, but go on. What were you saying? Uh, I wanted to talk about this beautiful lighter that Jared uh, has acquired. Yeah. So Jared and I, we've been going out, <laughs> going out smoking cigars, right? Got to be and about him. He's been looking. He's been looking at, he's been looking for this lighter for months, right? It's a DuPont lighter, yes. 18 karat gold. You know, it's got to be yellow gold, not rose gold, you know, because. Plenty of rose gold out there, essentially. I recognize. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, it looks yeah, like, I like the, the problem I like is we always find the rose gold ones. Yeah. Yeah. So finally, we went to uh, uh, Churchill Cigars and they had one. They had, and I'm like, Jared. Let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at it. Uh, he's like, all right, all right. So we go downstairs. He's, he's like, is this rose gold or yellow gold? Because he can't tell the difference, but he knows he wants he's yellow gold. He's colorblind in case you guys didn't know. <laughs> what was the other lighter? It was just a pure, um, it wasn't an actual lighter. It was just a straight, what do we call it? You mean a torch? No, no. Yeah, but, but the, the skinny one. The slim. Super, yeah, the slim. Yeah, the slim. slim. Yeah. They had a slim torch. Yeah. Which is pretty. But yeah, anyway. That's so. nice too, but. So they hooked it up over there at Churchill Cigars. They gave it to Jared. Uh, not for free, but, you know. <laughs> they basically gave it to him. No, I'm just kidding. They, they took care of us for sure. Another fine establishment in the greater Detroit area. The food uh, there is amazing. Yeah. Dude, the food is the really good. Great. I think um, I can't wait to try the food here. Zach and Mark have been privileged to try the food here. I still have to. But I will be definitely enjoying that tonight. Oh, I mean, I heard the clicking. That means Mark failed as a producer. Fire. No, I was gonna say last time I had the salmon. It was like salmon um, locks, pretty much. It was like toasted bread, uh, some kind of garlic cream cheese, salmon, some onions, and it was amazing. Hmm. What's that right now? I'm gonna up. All right, Zach's gonna delegate some stuff. Zach, um, Zach is out of here. And then I almost forgot. Because we haven't made an official announcement about this very special cigar that is available to the market. Um, and you can switch the camera to yourself while I explain. But we have the new Besa Maduro Mexican San Andreas wrapper. This is a full body experience compared to uh, the original Besa. 
Um, these are available officially on our website, basiscigar.com. Of course, they're also available at our retailers, including Don Cristo Cigar Room and all of the other locations in Florida. Uh, new locations coming in Michigan as well. New locations are always coming. Uh, we're talking to a lot of people, but this is a very, very good cigar. We've had great feedback on it, actually. I mean, everyone that smoked it has said that they loved it. Um, a lot of people say they might like it better than the original if they like more full body stuff. I'm still like coin flipping it. I think that I'm, for me, I'm 50, 50 on I it. know. Yeah. I think for me, it truly is just going to depend on my mood or the time of day. Um, but a lot of people that, a lot of people that we know too, like more full bodied stuff. So they enjoy it a lot more. I can definitely see this becoming our most popular version of the basic. It's very possible. I think it depends on the market too. I mean, if we're going to like a cigar smokers lounge, definitely. If you're going to like a, maybe a more boutique place or a place that's got some newer cigar smokers, it's new to the market. The Habana is probably going to do better. But, I mean, it really just depends on your mood, honestly. And they're very, very similar in quality. Construction, same quality, same construction, same great draw, smoke output. Um, really, the only difference is just that body and the flavors are going to be a little more on the richer side in terms of, like, Margarine? spice, espresso, more of that sort of, I want to say, like, dark flavors if that makes sense like you know dark co uh, dark chocolate strong coffee yeah I, I look at it like it really does resemble the original mm -hmm. while like taking it up a notch in strength for sure yeah for sure very well, more well put spice. There. very well put there thank you brother <laughs> <laughs> zach and i are smoking uh the habano so um we're kind of doing a little divided table thing here we got our maduro guys across the way we got the yeah. the ogs over here halfway through we're gonna uh switch each other's cigars <laughs> <laughs> oh man i'm not gonna do that um but yeah we'll start with these and see where the night goes we're doing uh i think i said that we're doing a cut and light big cut and light event here tonight so wanted to start on the lighter side and then work my way up uh i've been smoking quite a bit this these past couple of days so trying to trying to make sure I don't like put too much into my palate and like ruin it for the rest of the night. Does that make sense? Like overwhelm myself? For sure, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually have not been smoking a lot this week. I was on a work trip in Illinois and all the cigar shops out there closed at ten. What's going on there, guys? You know? In Chicago? It's kinda crazy actually. I wasn't I wasn't in Chicago. I was uh, like okay. about thirty five minutes out of Chicago. So it, it was like it, it was kind of like here compared to Detroit. Yeah, but way more small town. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was like near uh, some pipe outfitters uh, school. So How'd the uh, sales trip go? Make a lot of sales, my brother? No, no, no. It was like a sales training thing. You make a lot of training, my brother. I made, I made a lot of training, brother. <laughs> special are, teams. Are, you, are you trained? <laughs> are you special teams, special training, <laughs> special sales. <laughs> <clears throat> Excellent. Excellent surveying stuff sure <laughs> next time maybe we should all go together to be part of this training you go i think i could really learn something new in the sales stuff you're gonna crash it pretty much i'd be like well i think like the more we just learn about things in general the more we can succeed the more business opportunities will be presented quote him right now so write it down. somebody clip that someone clip, clip that it, clip it. <laughs> <laughs> see you know what your problem is yeah, like I was in your shoes, right? I, I, like I was going to school for international business, and then I realized that's my teacher. I was I, like, I'm not going to school for international. Where, business. where have you been internationally? And that's when I realized he's teaching me international business. He hasn't even been international. So that's when I started going international and doing international business. You're right, but none of the facts are there. But none of us are studying. You know I, what I'm saying? I, 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 know, I know you're quoting, and he actually recently got exposed. Luke, Luke, what's his name? Yeah, didn't he just get uh, lucky off Bitcoin or something? I think that's part of the story. But apparently, like, a lot of his story that he's been sharing got made up. Like, he said he came over here with his uncle or something from another country, but he was actually born here. I don't know. I, I saw a TikTok video, so I was like, okay, I don't even know. It's on TikTok, you know it's true. I mean, he has no accent. Like, he obviously was born here, you know? 
True. Not, not, not to say that, like... My dad doesn't have an accent. He wasn't born here. He has a little accent. Maybe I just don't hear it. Yeah, because you, you live with him. I don't think my mom has an accent, but people told me my mom Your has mom accent. definitely has an accent. But see, I live with her, so I don't hear it. Yeah, but you're also just like... Yeah, you're special. Special teams, you know, <laughs> all that. Welcome. All right, we got... We, we got... Oh, yeah, we're just getting warmed up. Yeah. I'll kick your ass. <laughs> That's kind of like where it really got heavy with cigars, right? During Call of Duty, like our Call of Duty days. COVID. COVID. Can you hear him good? Yeah. Can you, everyone's good? Yeah. Okay, cool. So do you really play Call of Duty or no? Dude, we played during COVID. He's not messing around. We, we retired. We retired once we got back to work. We literally played till 5 o'clock in the morning every single day. So our eyes were like bleeding. <laughs> so if you guys want to come out of retirement... <laughs> me and Zach will. Me and Zach will play you. You got yeah yeah. You play too. You do, uh, I don't play. I, I win. You could do a cigar. <laughs> cig- do you know? Can I tell you? Can I tell you guys a fun fact? My cousin, he actually wanted to come here for the hell of it, but he's rated top three percent in the world. For Call of Duty. Call of Duty. As of recently, because Call of Duty three, we set all the ranks. As Was it Call of Duty two or three? I, I don't know. It might have been probably two. He hasn't played me yet, so <laughs> I'm just yeah. saying he's. A, what's your what's your kill to death ratio? Oh, okay. What's your kill to death ratio? I'm pretty sure it's. Actually, I don't know. Is it like ranked or not ranked? For once, you don't you look at seen, numbers. When we first started playing, <laughs> we were on a duo one time, and uh, it was the first time he'd ever won, and I have it recorded somewhere. Like <laughs> he's like. You can see him like running around circling. His, you know, he's he's got the anxiety because he knows he's the last man standing, right? And we're all watching, and all of a sudden he just comes out and blasts the last guy and kills. He goes, "We won! Oh my god, <laughs> we won!" I'm like, oh. I was fucking screaming, dude, <laughs> screaming. It was. I started good. doing the fucking helicopter in front of my TV. <laughs> <laughs> it was so much fun. Oh man, Zach, yeah. would you like to do a formal introduction? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, before she comes over. All right, welcome to another episode of The Cigar Guys. We are at Don Cristo's Cigar Lounge. I already did that whole thing. Just oh, introduce these okay. uh, gentlemen. Cigar room. <laughs> Cigar room. Yeah, yeah, I messed it up too, but it's okay. I, I we'll corrected cut it. myself. We'll cut, it. we'll cut it. All right, anyway. All right, so joining us, we have Donnie and Francis. You guys are cousins, right? Yeah. 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 So Donnie is, and his brother own Don Cristo's, and Francis is uh, the right-hand man, I'd like to call you, if that's okay. Uh, he basically right hand on his left he, side. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we tried to get you on the right side, but you, you weren't happy. Yeah, he's he's getting us trouble. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for having us. Of course, of course. So we kind of want to just get started. Uh, how did you guys start Don Christos? Was it you know? Well, when this bar came first, it was an Irish pub before. Okay. And then my brother and I, when we came in, we were like the only way we'd be able to do this if we made a cigar bar. So when we called the city, long story short, you know, they approved it, and then we made it a cigar bar. And then the name actually, Francis is a big help to the name. Uh, we were literally talking on the phone, shooting the shit like we always do we every single Call day. Of Duty. I was like, I were we it. playing Call of Duty? Yeah, we were in the middle. No, I don't think so. <laughs> we were both. We were <laughs> both. Whichever Just, sounds cooler. <laughs> whatever one. <laughs> then like we were trying to throw names, and all of a sudden he's like, "Why not? Why not combine yours and Chris's name?" You know, Don. Don. He started throwing names, and how about Don Christos? And like you know, it was actually you know. When you throw enough shit on the wall, something's gonna stick. Exactly. You know what I mean? And it's stuck. You know, it's and then we actually named our Mexican place Don Cristos Tequila and Tacos. So yeah. oh, that's they, they kind of worked out like a little spinoff. You know what I mean? It sounded Mexican, so it kind of worked <laughs> out. <laughs> We're definitely gonna go check that out too later. Get some lunch, yeah, lunch absolutely. or something. Please yeah. let me know when you guys do. For sure, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I was amazed the last time I was here when you know you guys started carrying uh, the base of cigar. And when I walked in, I was just amazed at the sheer beauty of this place. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, the lounge chairs are so comfy. The bar is beautiful with the white, you know, marble or granite with the light shining through. Um, I mean, I, I was literally texting them the whole night. I'm like, you guys need to see this place. Like, pictures don't do it justice. We were here like, last night. We shut it down. I know. Last night. I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, this was, this was months ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, it was a, a, a lot of, we changed stuff so much, like m- during like the midst of all things, you know, like my architect had all these ideas and we didn't like it. And like for the chairs, my brother and I went to like nine different furniture stores and sat 
and all kinds of chairs for hours because you know i'm a big guy he's a big guy like the last thing you want when you're sitting down is to be uncomfortable like when we watch like any sporting events or boxing or whatever it is you know you're gonna be glued to your couch for like four three four hours yeah you don't want to be uncomfortable and there's so many times like after hour and a half like oh man my ass hurts my back hurts <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know what i mean so it's like you know it's an uncomfortable thing so it's like we want to make sure we got the right chairs even like our bar stools they're like we paid a lot extra for the bar stools alone you know what i mean just to make it a little bit more comfy yeah. you know for a smaller guy it's easy but for big guys it's not easy you know yeah. what i mean so so guys share the love for the big fellas absolutely even when i came uh last night was my first time we kind of stopped in for a few minutes and i walked in and i was caught off guard by how big it is yeah because like zach said pictures don't do it justice so i walked in i was like oh this is huge it, I, I thought it was maybe like half the size but you've got i mean first no, of all it's, big it, humidor yeah it's a big it's bigger than your average you know cigar bar and like you know the humidor we could have made it like there's a couple different options like we honestly there was one option was to throw it in this room here mm -hmm. and create it because there wasn't a glass wall before we just would have turned this into a humidor but there were like you know how much inventory you have to buy and like how many cigars you're never gonna sell to fill a humidor like that so mm -hmm. our whole thing was let's just fill it with quality over quantity and then there's gonna be something for somebody for of everything course. you know what i yeah. mean so plus now you know bis us absolutely I mean, so you also spent a lot of time we, we spent a lot of time frequenting all the different cigar bars we did and something we noticed was just like i said the lack of comfort when you go in you know you find places that are nice elegant but like really it's just not somewhere you want to spend two three hours smoking and yeah. enjoying a you know fine cigar he's right yeah and i mean we've noticed too that even if this place is packed you know, if you're sitting down, you still feel comfortable. Yeah. You know, other places, I mean. It's crammed up. Yeah, especially in Orlando area. Yeah. All the places over there, if it's packed, and you, even if you find a seat, people are bumping into you, people are, you know, squeezing by. Over here, it's not like that. Once you get your seat, you know, you're good. No one's really going to cram into you. It's you know, nice. Squeeze in. It's nice because there's designated areas. Like, you have this set of couches here, then, like, those couple sets there, then, like, even across the back, there's different sets of couches, and, like, the yeah. members' only rooms like super private and stuff like that. So Ash King, baby. Ash King. Every time he Francis to tries ash. to hold his ash, <laughs> he so drops the, it. Uh, the double doors, Ooh. is that members only? That's the members only so room. So what's yeah. this room called? It, this one's called the Olivia room, named after my daughter. And uh, nice. it's just, it's not even, we don't charge a fee. It's just whoever wants to come in here and enjoy themselves and be a little bit more private. That's what we do. You Wait, know what I mean? So I got a question. Why did they make me pay to come in here? <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah, yeah but talk. let's 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 talk about a little bit of the history here of what really made this place and what yeah. separates this place from the rest, right? Yeah. So, you know, again, I have there's no paid endorsement here. Um, this is just uh, we're, we're, we're family and and like to make sure that uh, you know he doesn't like to to brag or promote the the business, but really what separates this place, I think, from the rest, is um, not just the cigar, not just the bar. Um, but also the food, yeah. right? So one of the things that you find is, you know, go anywhere in Michigan. You know, there are a few places I'd say that have pretty good food, but, you know, Donnie and the family have been around in the food business for a long time. Right? It's our background. And it's their background. They started in the food business before the bar business, went into the bar business, got into the cigar business. And if you take a look at everything, I mean, steaks, chops, whatever it is, you know, not frozen, best quality meat you can find. I mean, they really have gone above and beyond to make sure that they're offering the customers the best possible experience overall, right? So that's another thing you'll hear about anyone, you know, if you start looking at reviews, everybody notices that right away. Yeah. So, and I've traveled around America, I've gone to Vegas, I've gone to Dallas, I've been in Florida, I've gone to different places that even don't even have food, but like that do have it. People wanna sit back, they wanna start with a cigar, yeah. maybe something light, have a nice steak, go to something a little bit more full body, you know, and kind of enjoy the night, so. Yeah. There's a lot of customers that come in that are snowbirds, and they mentioned to us that, like, the place that sticks out to them, like, after us, is a, a, a burn, burn in Naples. Yeah. He said that's when they, when they go to Florida, he goes, that's, like, the only place I can compare oh, it to burn, this. Burn Steakhouse. Burn the uh, Rocky Patel. Oh, Rocky oh, Bar. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 the food. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> so he's like, that's what, he's like, when I compare, like, the class and, the, like, the big space and the elegance behind everything he goes like that's the only place i can compare is like to burn in naples and yeah. you know like a few customers were like how francis travels a lot that's how they would compare it you know around anywhere else that they've been you know and then that, we wanted to correct any flaws that other places had not that yeah. you know everybody has their own flavor of, of how course. they want to run their business but like 
my brother and I want to fix, you know, any problems that we had or we, we seen in the, in the, in the cigar business, we want to correct that in our own experience, like at Don Crystal's with the food. That's why like our food is from fairway packing and like in Michigan, that's like the top dog to get your meat and yeah, seafood. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like always comes fresh, never frozen. So that was the whole thing behind it with, like, with the cigars. Like, you know, I never wanted to carry like the, the cheap cigars. Like we have our house sticks that, you know, are cheap for the customers that just, that's the route they people like to take. So yeah. People that smoke a lot of cigars are not always going to buy the $15, $20 sticks. You know what I mean? They just might splurge maybe a couple times a week. You know what I mean? But we just tried the best to correct everything and have pretty girls working and like nice clean staff and everything like that and keep the place clean every day. So it's just, we try really hard to make it like the best we can possibly make it even yeah. with upgrades. And we have some stuff that's coming in the near, near future that, you know, we'll talk about it later today, but we're just trying to like every year to improve this place, you know, a lot. Cause there's always a room for improvement no oh, matter exactly. what you're doing it, you know? And I mean, this place was established in 2022, only a couple years ago. So, I mean, I'm sure I haven't seen it when it first started, but you're probably making improvements constantly. Actually, constantly. you know, we started, but we didn't open until 2023. Oh, really? Yeah. So we've only been open like a year and year and like three months. So we're, we're so, we're still wow. so new, just scratching the surface, to be honest with you. When we, I, I thought I smoked a lot of cigars and I thought I knew a lot about cigars until the first day we opened, customers corrected me <laughs> so quick. Oh, what's this? What what body flavor is this? Where's that? Where's, yeah. you know, cause <laughs> I stuck, we stuck to our own like one, two cigars wherever we went. Oh, they don't got this oh, or they don't got that. I'm like, okay, I'll settle for whatever this is. I don't know. But like customers like trained all of us to be honest with you. They, that's how yeah. I learned about cigars from the customers because you know, you could read them, uh, read up as much as you want, but until like, you know, Secondhand, like background cooking is my background, right? You could tell me how to cook something, but until like I learn how to do it myself, there's no way like you can figure it out on yeah. your own. You know what I mean? So we learned a lot from the customers and, you know, even all these other new different brands is just, that's just it. it. It's a great experience the first year. And, you know, I can only imagine like the people that have been doing it for 20 years, yeah. the knowledge on cigars and tobacco and everything above, you know, what it, what it is, you know? I'm sure, like, you know, your guys' experience, that you're new in the, with the cigars, like, what's your guys' intake on being in the cigar business, you know, because how long you have been, so a couple of years? Yeah, about, Yeah, so yeah. established 2022 as yeah. well. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, no, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, well, I was going to say, you bring up a great point, because, I mean, I started smoking cigars when I was 18, so probably about five or six years before we really started BESA, and it's the same thing. You think you know a lot until you get into the industry, and then there's so much more to learn especially on the back end the Absolutely. business side yeah. but then you learn more about like you said you know the body or where the tobacco comes from and the differences of origins just the layers and like like before we open like i didn't know i didn't know about any of that stuff you know then they're talking about the binder the filler i'm like <laughs> I'm like what the hell are we getting into well, like, what did i get myself into like yeah. are we still talking about cigars, cigars? Yeah, you know, that's what i'm it. saying it's like we're performing surgery on yeah. cigars now it's like it's crazy that's like a good uh, segue into this uh, new bass. What notes are you hitting in that? Oh, man. <laughs> I'm still figuring out my first third here. He's being sarcastic. He, he loves to do it. He, you know, he's still mad because he can't get a good retro yet. You know, so no, I don't know. Me to, neither. Yeah, no, I don't I'm know how to retro. <laughs> I've done it. So I Alex just, retros, doesn't he? Yeah, Alex retros. I retro hailed for the first <laughs> time on our episode with La Aurora with Willie. Uh, and he's like, he, he, he was just peer pressuring me. He's like, he's like, come on, Zach. You could do it. You could do it. I'm like, all right, I'll try and I did it. You know, I coughed, of course, but it, it's hard for me to retro. It's so. Do you notice that big of a difference when you retro versus not retroing? So it actually is a, a, huge, a huge difference. difference. It really is. So right. for a long time, I couldn't retro hail. I, I couldn't conceptualize how to do it. And someone finally explained it to me. They explained it in a way that I could understand. So I did it, and I was like, oh, okay, I get it. And then now it's gotten to the point where like I have to make myself not retro hail. Like I have to kind of calm well, you're myself not, you're down. Not, you're actually not inhaling it, right? right. So you just put it, but you know, I'll tell you, it's it's interesting because he always says, you know, oh, this is a great stick. I'm like, you only know 180 degrees of it. You don't have the full 360, 360. right? Because you know you're kind of taking it in, you know, uh, from the front end and then kind of releasing it from the back end. Sounds like you turned that into. Ella's sounds like you turned that into a joke. She's bringing us some drinks over here. All right, this is oh, my thank favorite you drink. So much, thanks and cheers. Hello, what do we got here? Old fashioned? Woodford Reserve Old 
Oh my god. Oh, nice. How did you know? Reserve old fashioned. Donnie's got his extra cherries. He's got a hot Yeah, I got a couple of <laughs> So I have some for you too. I was I was in uh, Los <laughs> Angeles. <laughs> I was in Los Angeles this week and I, you know, I uh, went in one of our cigar groups and I posted so a, uh, uh, a a quick post about um, what cigar bar I should visit. Anything in northern LA and coincidentally I was in Valencia and there happened to be a comment you should go to this place in Valencia. So I head out to Valencia and visit this this uh this lounge i think it was called genuine uh cigar lounge and uh, i was placed right in the mall right in the outdoor mall so I, it's it's you know packed with the the typical crew of cigar guys you see in there just sitting and smoking and you know we started talking about the cigars and you know who prefers what and etc and i we started talking about the retro and one guy has been smoking for like 20 years and he's like i've never retroed so we sat there just like we do and i'm trying to coach him on how to do it and he he's like i just did it and i'm like you did He's like, oh my god! He How just the hell did you know there. he did it? Yeah, like, I can like, see it. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I yeah, I was no, no. So he's really sitting. He's sitting right you in front. Of the, you see the smoke yeah, coming out. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm watching it go in your tubes yeah. and then come out. <laughs> way. I'm like, come on, man! Like, <laughs> he's got the camera that so, the doctors use. So, yeah. so he, he retros and honest to god, he was like, oh my god! That was his first thing he said. Like when Donnie won his first Call of Duty game. He's like, oh my god! And literally, the guys are looking at him. He's like, what? He's like, I just retroed. He's like, I can taste the completely different, you know, flavor from the cigar. And you yeah. really do, right? So, like, a lot of times I, I notice, like, you'll get more of your earth tones and everything kind of, like, in the beginning, right? Or you get a, a lot of the chocolate and the spice. and you'll. But when you release from, the, from your nose on the retro, you'll see that you start to even get, like, citrus and grapefruit and things like yeah. that. Flavors that you're not going to get typically smoking just puffing and, and yeah, blowing. He's, right? he's not bullshitting either. <laughs> he's looking at him like, ah. Like, this, guy, <laughs> this, this, this is, this is, this is no, the yeah, same, this is the same Coco. reaction on, I get from him every time we talk about Did you tell me that you picked up citrus from the Besa? <laughs> no, hazelnut. A lot of hazelnut. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get, Someone told me they picked up citrus from it once, and I'm like, I don't know about that one. Only person you know, I know they must enough. have been drunk or something. I was going to say, the yeah. only person I know that will probably Dude. dissect that taste to a flavor is uh it's our antonio, antonio, yeah, right? our antonio. <laughs> you, you're eating too much cherries that's what it was yeah, yeah. hey why don't we kick this off though yeah, yeah cheers, cheers guys Thank welcome you guys to uh, guys. Thank the you detroit for suburbs cheers. and our producer Don Crystal, cheers. Cigar producer. Room, brother. Cheers. producer mm. wow it's delicious oh yeah it's really good what better uh oh, yeah. way to start our day absolutely you know, with the best. so you guys recently Converted, uh, or I should say, uh, um, diversified your your <laughs> cigar line. We came to the dark side. It's yeah. actually came to the dark side. It's a really good stick. Thank so you. this I is mean, a- well, thank you guys because you guys helped us pick it. Yeah. Sample them, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. So, oh, so we, we had fun. <laughs> yeah. So we actually we sent them some of our sample uh, sticks just to kind of you know perfect <laughs> the blend. Get some feedback. We know how much they're smoking the base over here. So. Uh, yeah, it's no, my dad's favorite it. stick, by the way. Is it? No way. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I mean, he, yeah. he converted, and like somebody, one of the girls brought him a different stick, and it was they thought he wanted this, but he didn't want it. But he tried it. He goes, "What is this?" I was like, "I'm like, oh, that's that best cigar that those Nicola guys that they own in Florida." <laughs> and then he was like, "He goes, wow, this is really good." And that's all my dad smokes on every single that's day. That's awesome. Then when his boys come with him to hang out, that's all they smoke too is the best side too, and they and honestly they love it because they're not like. They're not like you know cigar aficionados. They're just guys that want to smoke, have a drink, enjoy yeah. their each other's company, and have a good conversation. That's, that's who all. We are. Yeah, just like how, what we're doing, <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. That's all they do, and they just want to enjoy a cigar that's not like super full bodied and like because you know th- this version is the like the more like laid back, yeah. you know, cigar, which is it's nice because there's a lot of people that don't want to smoke a cigar and catch a buzz at one o'clock in the afternoon. Right. They still gotta function for the rest of their day you know what i mean so so has yeah, your dad I'm, tried the new one yet or no no he hasn't but i mean he'll try it later on sounds when good. he comes in i'm sitting here looking it was uh january uh where are we at here uh i just lost it um oh when i sent you the samples yeah i i have it right here somewhere i was yeah you have the notes of the flavor everything hold on I I remember you, yeah you showed me yeah. he sent you a text it yeah. was originally january 16th but like well, you can see i took the two different ones yeah i'm looking at the the first the second and the third third and yeah. trying okay what am i getting out of this you know first thing we like is you know it has to be pretty too you know you notice a lot of these cigars are really you know you yeah, yeah. feel like it's a sponge but no you guys pack them well and they're good sticks they are very good i'm glad, I'm glad you guys decided uh and even like supply. a lot of customers that don't know like you know We'll go and say, hey, try the Bessa, you know, cigar. This is, and they like it. And there's like customers that come in here that only smoke Bessa when they come in here, which That's is awesome. nice. Good job, Ash King. <laughs> I was waiting for that to happen too. <laughs> no, that's good to hear. 
And that's that's what happens a lot of times is, I mean, we, we understand we're a very new brand. You know, there's not a lot of people that know the name. But once they do try the cigar, they're like, okay, this is really good. And I understand because, you know, a new brand of anything, any business comes out, it's like, okay, what credibility do you have? It takes time. For sure. That's it. It yeah. takes time. It takes well, time. Of, it takes people smoking it for a while. It, it, it's it, Nothing happens overnight. Of course if, not. If there's one thing I've, I've learned kind of working that humidor, I'm still waiting for a paycheck, by the way. But, uh, <laughs> uh, let me tell you something. In the mail. You're not going to get it? <laughs> <laughs> but, no, no. You know, the thing I noticed about cigar smoking, right? And it's great because, you know, you could be a newbie. You, you might find someone that's completely been in it for 20, 30 years, right? But I feel like a lot of people walk in, right? And they honestly, they'll run straight to a brand. Yeah. They'll go to a Cohiba or yeah. Padron. You, know, you have a Cohiba, right? Yeah. And they'll spend 20, 30 bucks, right? And, and cigars, it's like wine, right? It just depends on you, your you, palate. You can, yeah. yeah. But, but it's not even the palate, right? You might find a cigar that's, you know, a, a $6 house stick that is phenomenal. Yeah. That is much better than a, a thirty dollars stick that you'll see in there from one of the major name brands, exactly. right? Because people just don't know. And right away, you know, I've also noticed in this business that people come and they'll smoke a cigar, and they'll be like, "I hate, it. I can't stand it." Like they go to a full body, they're they're kind of you know not smoking it right. They get a sore throat. So like you'll see a lot of people just don't really know what they're doing. They kind of come in and just grab anything. So I've noticed that just being in there, people just run. We we spend time. They spend a lot of time. Like when someone doesn't know what they're doing, like. You want something light, you want something full body, strong, you know, et cetera. Like, what are you drinking, right? And so trying to get them to pair it right, too. It's just so they have a good experience. And, you know, I feel like you talked about doing classes here, right, and kind of showing people. And, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's uh, it's something that I think sticks out when, when you're in this business. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, too, um, the reason we initially got introduced is because of uh, your heritage and you recognize the – label of the cigar on Actually, Facebook. Actually, you want to know something funny? Yeah. My wife really found you guys when we were we were actually in Florida That's and right, yeah. my my wife was like, "Oh, there's this Besa cigar, this and this. They're out they're based out here in Florida." And then I think that's when I got a hold of you yeah. somehow. I don't know what it was through. I think through Facebook. Is through what Facebook. It was, yeah. And that's when we messaged each other, you know, and then we, that's how we got connected originally. But it was Thanks to my wife, to be honest with you. That's so, awesome. Donnie yeah. saw Gonzalez, and he's like, why am I messaging this guy Gonzalez <laughs> with an Albanian cigar? <laughs> I, I mean, I questioned it for a yeah. little bit. I was like, I'm like, you know what? You know, fuck it. Let's, you know, let's well, roll with it and you, see, you, you know? Have you to speak Albanian yet? I have not. I learned a few words. Okay, like, so to let's, get let's, by. What, what word do you know? Uh, oh, he man. can't say no, it. We're, we're, we're on a podcast. We don't, have a, we don't have a Google Translate on or anything. So go ahead. So <laughs> I, I, the, I first, the first Albanian word that comes to mind, don't even say it. No, <laughs> no, 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 you know what it is. Well, I just want to see if it's what I think it is. No, uh, it is. It is what it is. Okay, go ahead. Let's see. No. Uh, no, you not, might surprise me. Not to Not to Namir, no. Not to Namir. No, we'll talk off camera more. But no, yeah, I've learned uh, some of the basic greetings and then, you know, obviously the worst of the worst words. Every time you learn a new language, everyone always wants to teach you the bad words. Of course, Right off yeah. the bat, you know? Yeah, so, so yeah, he's actually picked up, you know, quite a bit. Like, we've taken him to Albanian weddings in New York when my cousins get married, you know? Yeah. Because we'll do, like, cigar events over there, and I'm like, oh, just come to the wedding, you know? There's 400 people. There's got to be an extra seat. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah, for sure. Or just at the bar. But, yeah, yeah. Wait for everyone to eat, and then just, yeah. Well, no one sits down anyway. Everyone's yeah. dancing all yeah, the time. Yeah, so. right. There's always an empty seat. So, so how did you come up with the name Bissa? So, originally, we were, you know, same thing as you guys, right? We're just talking. We're just naming different names. And then finally, we, you know, we did some research. And uh, we're like, what's, what's a meaningful word in Albanian? Right, so we yep. we found we finally found Besa, and we're like, that's an easy enough word for like Americans to say, right? And we can put a lot of uh, knowledge, like we can give them knowledge on what it means, yeah. Right, mm -hmm. so then that's why, like on, on on our box, it tells you it means like faith or an oath to your family, to your country, to your word, yeah. you know, to your word. It's yeah, a very important word to the the heritage of Albanian people. So I mean, that's a very strong word. Yeah. Exactly, that you yeah. guys picked, right? So and we kind of found that in the same like. That same oath that Albanians have, we found that in the cigar industry, right? We go to the cigar lounge and we have friends that, you know, we have a bond that we can't break. You know, I agree. they help us out. We help them out. And you, could, and you could be a brand new person to a cigar lounge, walk in, and right away someone would be like, oh, do you need a lighter? Do you need a cut? Yeah. Oh, I got an extra cigar. Try this you one. You could take two enemies and put them in a cigar lounge and they'll become friends. Exactly. Yeah. Right. yeah. So that's kind of why we picked Besa. Um, yeah, I know that like then, in the very beginning... You know, we decided, okay, we want to do a cigar. What should we do? I think Mark was the one that really 
he was pushing like I want to do an Albanian cigar. I think that'd be cool. There's really you know I don't know about Albanian cigars. Any Albanian like in cigar business in general, be like let's create an yeah. Albanian cigar, right? That is true. Yeah, <laughs> we've talked about it too. We came. We we thought the same the process as you. It was like what's the name? What's the name? Can we came up with? I, I forgot what it was. <laughs> Shoot. What's what's our group chat called, man? Come on. Oh, the Kumara. Kumara is like Kumaras, you know, we're yeah, best yeah, men, Kumara, right? Yeah. So yeah. we're we're that's a, what we came up with was like Kumaras, right? So but yeah. like anyway, it's uh, uh let's uh, let's say it right, man. Kumar, man. <laughs> Kumar. So so my question towards you guys now that you guys have been, are in the game now for a couple of years, created a couple a few sticks. So what what is what is your guys' future plans? I, I guess like where do you guys take it after th- this next stick? Do, would you guys change the label of the next future sticks or like what's your guys' plans? Yeah, so, so. yeah I think um, I'll let you talk to you. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> but like we're coffee. definitely going to um, expand the base of line with not just Scander Bag, but maybe some different, uh, different people throughout history. history. Yeah. yeah. So it'll be kind of a similar theme to Besa. I can uh, see Queen Tuta being next. The Queen. Long live the Queen. It's, it's possible. Do they have long live the Queen? They have long live the Queen, don't they? Caldwell, yeah. yeah Caldwell, okay. Oh, they do, yeah. Mm, but di- yeah. So different people throughout history that represent Besa, <clears throat> some Albanian, some maybe not Albanian, but still kind of have that same story or that same history. Um, and then, I mean, eventually I think we'll do another line, but I'd like to focus on Besa for sure, get a few different blends out there, uh, expand on the story more. Yeah. Um, but there's definitely going to be different Albanian cigars coming out in the future. Yeah, and you know we are Catholic too, so one thing you know, Alex might get mad at me for saying this, but you know, you know we do have some plans too to show Albanian history, but with the religious side of it too. Mm-hmm. You know, so do some Catholic like or you know Christian esque cigar, you know, but with Albanian. So history that's funny that you say that because I believe the cigar company Black Label something. They have, I might have one in the back. If I do, I'll show you guys. But they have like the Virgin Mary, the wrapper's black and like gray. Do you remember I remember I showed you that it was a full body yeah, cigar yeah, yeah, with yeah, Busto yeah, size. Yes, yes, yes. So they have something like that too. But I mean, which is obviously it's not like an idea. You, you have Dang to like, go it. away. Still our idea. No, <laughs> no, no, actually though, I think you're onto something because if you look at George Castriotti or, or Skinner Beg, right, and if you look at the meaning and what he did, if, if if you look if you go to the Vatican and you find his his statue there you know what he's called the defender of christianity yeah yeah so i mean there's deep heritage there right and it's a it's a direct connection to what you're looking to do exactly and you yeah. know he fought you know ottoman rule coming into albania originally from there you know born christian yeah. you know taken as a child you know converted into islam for i think what 20 years yeah yeah they want to come back and take over his homeland came out and said not going to happen right exactly. first thing he did is he went back converted hooked up with the pope had the pope's blessing and backing i mean it's a really good story yeah, right exactly, so yeah. and a lot of times when we either go to different cigar lounges or we do events and we share the history of scanner bag and that time period a lot of people don't really know the story so they're very intrigued by it and they're like oh i didn't know that i didn't know that you know he's basically the defender of christianity the whole story with the ottoman empire and everything like that and then some people do know and then they really appreciate it. they're like that's awesome that you made a cigar that ties into that history we so it's like a, a great really talking good movie point. to come out about him, like 300. They should have like they should that movie. They really should. I mean, if you look at his story and how he had small yeah. armies and uh, that were conquering, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. Ottoman armies, it's, it's pretty I think sweet. someone made a documentary about it. Someone oh, told yeah, me. You'll see yeah. that stuff. But, but a I'm movie about, like, would a real be real cool. Hollywood, yeah. you know, well, I mean, big budget film. You know, after we picked an Albanian cigar, that's kind of what we wanted. You know, we wanted to get the history out there because it's so interesting. Yeah. You know, you can make movies on it for years. You can yeah. make multiple movies and, you know, you'd never run out. Um, so that's why when we were like, all right, we got the name, we got everything. Let's, you know, actually put a story behind each cigar, yeah. you know, each cigar. If you look it up, base a cigar, you go online and you could read it. You go on our boxes, you could read the story. You know, it's, of course it's a slim thing cause we put it on the box, but online you could read the whole article. It's a spark notes. But, but, it, but it's nice because if customer comes in and doesn't know what you guys are about and you have like the description of what it is, that's, I, I personally like that to tell you the truth. Yeah. I know Padron does that a lot with the ratings and what the cigar is on their on the inside of their mm-hmm. box. So I mean, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I mean, yeah, th- this was a newer thing, probably last six months, seven months, something like that. Basically, yeah. I just got tired of answering questions, so I said, "Here, it's on the box." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but too, it's great because if you walk into a humidor, obviously, I'm not going to be there to explain it. Everything's right there. Yeah, and you know, not every cigar shop is as great as Don Cristos, right? They're not going to go and explain how much you, you know, pay you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, he bought me dinner last night. <laughs> no, um, they're, they're bringing those old fashions. They're not going to sit there and explain to you every cigar. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's just not worth it. You know, there's too much of a selection. Yeah. And a lot of people just don't want to work. You know, they're selling cigars and they're like, oh, I'll just cash it out for you. Well, you, you uh, guys, you guys did a good job with this. I'll tell you because going back to even like a newbie or someone who's an experienced smoker, this flavor profile that you guys have created here, I think is, you know, very diverse. Yeah. And it's a good flavor for anyone smoking it. Right. So I think that's what, you know, like it's I said, easy to bother. Smoke. It's very yeah. easy to smoke. You know, nice medium cigar, a lot of flavor. Anyone smoking it, like you said, his father, it's his favorite stick now, right? Yeah. So it's probably my preferred stick too. If I'm going to, you know, go to something always and he knows I'm promoting it as well every time I'm in here. Yeah. So you guys did a really good job. Hats off to this. Yeah, you guys did. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. And we know like based on the numbers, it's it's moving for sure. That's great. Yeah. I know a lot of people try to create a cigar brand and, you know, try to put something together and but they, they fail, you know, miserably. And like you guys, like, you guys, it's improved. Even since like day one, we first started, again, the label inside, just little things like that help. So it's like you guys are on the, definitely the right track. So, yeah. We're well, just kind of like you were you saying guys. too, those slow uh, tweaks, always improving, you know, what works, what doesn't, what could help. So, I mean, we're always going to be doing that. I'm sure that the whole box will change eventually again, you know? So, whatever we find works better. But, and yeah. two, if you enjoy it, and I know like you guys really enjoy the business, we really enjoy this side of the business, and that's a good motivator to keep you going. And you're always you're always thinking about how to make your business. Better. It's a it's a good thing when you're in a business that you actually love the foundation of that you enjoy every day. I mean, yeah. you know, this is now the 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 place where you come to get away, right? Exactly. No matter what, especially yeah. you know winter time, but even summertime. Mm -hmm. But you know, like you guys, you guys have a passion. Uh, 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 you know, it's something that you guys love to do pretty much probably every day, right? Yeah. So yeah. kind of combine sometimes the, the personal one to five and professional day, aspect. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. he hit eight one day. I'm like, dude, <laughs> relax, yeah. buddy. Yeah. The most I've ever smoked in a day was seven. So eight, now I got to beat it. Yeah. Nine. You do. You do. No, but yeah. But that's like constantly smoking all day. And I have a heavy draw. Well, you're working so too, right? Well, no, when I'm here, I'm just, if it's one of those days where I don't feel like doing anything, I go hide in my rabbit hole in the back in the members only room and I'll just smoke cigars and relax and catch up on work and get a lot done. It's he wouldn't let us smoke in the Escalade in the beginning, but now you go in there, it's uh, another cigar room. Now it's Escalade. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. It gets to your vehicle eventually. Yeah. Like, ah. eventually, yeah. yeah oh, I'll keep the windows open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah whenever, when I got my car, I'm like, no smoking here, no smoking here. Yep. And then one time I'm like, all right, let me keep the window open. I'll keep my hand outside just, you know, until we go to the next bar. My shit. Yeah. My dad has like a little styrofoam cup with a perfect hole just to dab your ash in. He's he's funny. He has this whole setup in his car. Yeah, yeah even even with uh like the cigars, right? The reason we have so much passion too, you know, it's yeah, our heritage and everything, but we didn't wanna just throw money at it. You know, we didn't wanna take out a loan, you know, and just be like, Oh, we're gonna come out with six different brands right away because you know what then we're gonna get lazy we're gonna be like oh hey you know these six brands taste good to us right now but yeah. in a month we taste them again and they're gonna be awful you know and we've all tasted i won't name any names but we've tasted some bad cigars that people just threw money at and, yeah you know they just want a name on there yeah. um and it's not worth it you know because at the end of the day like yes it's not my family name it's not nikolai on there yeah yeah but it still comes back to me yeah you know it's still and it it comes back to albanians too right yeah, yeah. i don't want to put something out that you know makes albanians look bad you know i'm not going to put out a stick that you know someone smokes and it's like oh i'm never going to smoke an albanian you know themed cigar again <laughs> yeah. it's not worth it well i will say too i mean we have to smoke them all the time so one of the big things was if we're going to make a cigar we have to be able to enjoy it all 100%. the time. You know, if we're going to events all the time, we got to be smoking it. So we can't get tired of it. I still haven't gotten tired of it, thank thankfully. Well, yeah. you know, it's consistent too, right? Because you, you'll, you'll see in this business with a common cigar, you know, obviously, depending on the, the volume and velocity of sales. But like, you know, you smoke some sticks and it's not consistent. Like, it, yeah. you, no matter what, I've been smoking Bessa for probably, what, a year now. And... It's consistent across the board. Yeah, yeah that's you, yeah. nothing pisses me off more than an inconsistent cigar. Like at one point, you know, back when you know I had disposable income and I wasn't paying for anything, you know, I was just making money. I would get Davidoffs a lot, and I yeah. would smoke the Davidoff late hour. Right, it's a great stick. I yeah, I love the stick. But during like COVID ish, you know, when they stopped, they stopped it, so you couldn't get it anymore. Then they kind of brought it back. Uh, 
every cigar I smoked, it either had like, you know, a burning issue, the flavor was off, the it, it was just awful. So it pissed me off on spending, you know, in Florida, it's $27 now, right? I'm spending $27 on a stick that I'm not enjoying, you know? And I'm like, we can't do that. We got to make sure that, you know, everything is good with it. Flavor is going to stay the same. Um, our quality control is, you know, we, we have four of us. So it's yeah. like our quality control is pretty on point, you know, because we all have different palates. Yeah. We're all going to sense something that the other person doesn't. We're pretty, uh, sh- like, strict and self-critical, too. So if yeah. I see a cigar that, like, has, like, the slightest crack in it or something, I'm like, no, nope, that can't go in the box. Like, yeah. we'll, we'll smoke that one ourselves <laughs> yeah. or something. Even with design work, we get into arguments all the time. You know, arguments, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It brings us closer, though. We learn about each other. It, <laughs> it does bring us closer, yeah. Like I sent. Uh, who's, who's the strongest one? That's what I really want to know. Strongest one. Yeah, who, for what? I don't know if you guys got really into it. Who would win? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> give, give me a few whiskeys. It probably come down to me and Zach, and then I'll pin him. I don't know. Zach I used know. to be a wrestler. No, All right, Mark used to be a wrestler. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I probably Mark, to be honest with you. Mark's got like angry man strength. <laughs> Mark, Mark's that guy that's like calm. Oh, we got welcome, another welcome. Man now, Here's the backbone. It's yeah. my, my brother Chris. Welcome. How you doing? How are you guys? Good. good fantastic. Good. How you doing? This is the Chris and Don Christos. Would you like a cigar? Help myself to one. Could have resist. What are you what are you drinking with that uh bass out there? Cappuccino. Cristo. Okay. How are we doing it, guys? Good, man. Good. Doing good. Levels. It's good. Good. Good to see you. We're, 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 we're live, so no profanity. Absolutely. No, we've had a we've had a restart about five times. This fucking guy here. walks in. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're recording, so you can say whatever you want. We'll just put a little bleep, bleep. No, we won't. Really? I, did. I will not do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's your guys' biggest challenge of of the cigar company? I would say right now it's just uh, the recognition, like getting the name out there, uh, building the trust. Uh, we kind of talked about it earlier. It's hard for a new brand to, you know, obviously have any trust right out the gate. So basically, it's just getting out there as much as possible, going to as many shops as we can, as many locations as we can, and having people try it. There's never been an issue of, I don't like the cigar. I think the biggest issue is like, if I put this in my shop, is it going to sell? Are people going to see it and buy it? Um, so really, it's just building that brand recognition and getting people to recognize the brand and trust it know that it means high quality. Um, that's really the biggest issue right now. But as far as the cigar itself, I mean, we've had no complaints. I, I've been asking people, please tell me something bad about the cigar so we could fix it. But everyone's Absolutely, enjoyed it. You, yeah. you don't just want to hear the good feedback. You want to hear the yeah. bad feedback too. Exactly. I mean, the worst thing that we've heard is like, for example, with the Habano, it's like, oh, it's just too, uh, too mild for me. You know, someone that likes a more full body cigar. So, of course, we got to have a full body cigar now. Mm-hmm. Um, so, just stuff like that. Not, and then, um, I don't know. What do you think? Are there any other issues we've had? Yeah. Um, big problem is like shops in Florida, they'll want, uh, they'll want multiple lines right yeah. off the bat, right? Yeah. But then, if you came out with, let's just say, five different kinds of cigars, They'll only want to purchase one or two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like we want the diversity from your yeah. company, but we don't want all your lines. So it's like for us, it's kind of, you know, just pick one. You know, we have the stuff that you want. We have the stuff you that you guys want. You know, drink. I'm so sorry through. to interrupt you. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. Yeah, get them another round. Okay. Yeah. Another round. Chris, we're on, we're on vacation. I, guess. I, I was going to say go. no. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? Nah, I said well, I was going to hey, say no. <laughs> he's kidding. He's joking. Well, the, I, think the advantage, like, I'm I think the advantage for the niche community of the cigar business you know is that it's while well, a lot of people smoke and the business end it's 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 a pretty small world right you can contact you know various lounges I, I, you know some states are are going to be you know more saturated than others like florida i'm sure there's a cigar lounge you know in every corner depending on what what, what part of florida you're in yeah, right depending so on the area tampa, you've got probably what 20 30 cigar lounges in tampa oh way yeah. more dude yeah, tampa more, is right? like Insane. Miami, for example, Miami's you know? also yeah. So you know, in, in Michigan, I mean, I've got to give hats off. I think one of the biggest concerns when when uh, Don Cristos first opened was, you guys are going into like the one saturated area yeah. of any place you could choose. There's four or five cigar lounges within three miles. Yeah. Right. Uh, but fortunately, they weren't looking at competition. What the competition did, they looked at what 
their style was what did they expect to see right in the food business and the you know like i said comfort into the quality going for a different type of uh ultra posh lounge if you will yeah. so you know and, and, it, and it played out fairly well for them we, so we just want to do it right yeah. that's all it was we want we didn't want to mess it up because we know that not only is it a big investment it's like a, a home for people to come to and get away for the day for the hours for me for to come here for meetings you just can't go to a regular bar right cigar bar to me it's like your place to get away for three four hours where you don't have to go in you know worry about anybody bothering you or anybody bothering you to get up off your seat if you're not spending a ton of money do you know what i mean if you're yeah. just on your laptop working and smoking you're able to do that at a cigar lounge so i, I feel like we didn't want to mess it up we want to make it as perfect within our power as we could from the ventilation yeah. you know like our, our ventilation saved the art so it's like you know it's very good you know it sucks it up right away even when this place when it's packed on the weekends at nighttime even during the week like there's never like a cloud of smoke anywhere like somebody can eat you can eat you can be smoking both of you could be smoking right there and i'm eating my steak and i'm not tasting smoke with my steak yeah, you yeah. know what i mean and that's yeah. like the most important thing because you don't want to go and eat dinner and like you know as much as we love to smoke cigars you don't want to eat it right yeah, so exactly. it's like i feel like the ventilation was the biggest thing here for us because that was the pe before people seeing that they're like how's your ventilation how's your yeah. ventilation mm -hmm. you know is your ventilation good like that's all people would care about yeah. was the ventilation which that's the most important thing because at the ventilate i've been to place we've been to places before where the ventilation was so poor yeah. you're that basically we're leaving crying and we got headaches and yeah. not about the, zzz and the zapping sounds and yeah, all that like, <laughs> you know, like some ventilation the clunker like, right yeah. yeah so it's like oh florida's but, full of those yeah like yeah. florida you know all the cigar lounges over there have terrible ventilation there's a handful that do it right um and the only place that i would compare like that we know of uh that would compare to this lounge is the drawing room in terms of the ventilation it will ventilation and the, the luxury too the luxury yeah. Yeah. of it yeah the only yeah. thing is the theme is a little different you guys are you know dark wood black white sort of thing there's this you know green and gold um but they're a members only like club yeah. right? okay they have a private dining room then a, a cigar room but even you know this you know cigar room lounge room right yeah yeah sure right you know, it's gonna get on me but uh, this is bigger than the drawing room that we have in Orlando. Oh, this place is like a, it's like an arena on the weekends when like sports, you know, boxing and the oh, Lions, when they score a touchdown, I mean, this place is so loud, it's like you literally right? jump out yeah. of your seat. Yeah. But I wanted to talk about two, two other things here. Again, you know, mentioned, you know, state of the art, made me think of art. Look at every, look at every painting on the wall. Yeah, this whole podcast focus, I've been looking at. Focus, <laughs> focus on the picture. What do you see when you look at every picture? You put the cigars on there. Every picture in here is handmade. We we got it made from a guy, a gentleman. Oh, actually, okay. my brother found his TikTok randomly scrolling, and he was he, he texted me. He's like, "Hey, like this is so cool. Like it was something completely different, you know." Yeah, I did. Uh, I believe a Pablo Escobar with a with a blunt in his hand, basically. Oh, really? You know, so I was like, "Would you be able to do something like a cigar, for example?" You know, and he's like, "Absolutely, let's try it out." So he made the first one. We loved them, you know, sort of like, all right, you know, let's think of a list of handfuls that we can. Sorry, can you guys explain? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was going to say, if you need to say anything, just grab the mic. Yeah. 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 Like a list of like handful of like, you know, cigar smoking actors, you know, famous people like that like to smoke cigars. Yeah. Like Michael Jordan's on that side. He's big on smoking cigars. You know, like Babe Ruth, nobody even knew about it. But like Babe Ruth had a cigar factory, like his own cigar company, you know, so we got oh, yeah. a picture of him. So it was like, it was like. We did the whole entire place with just pictures like this. You know what I mean? And that turned into not only pictures, right? But every table is handmade. Yeah, the yeah, signs yeah, are handmade. The yeah, ashtrays. So, ashtrays are all handmade. Yeah, left no stone wooden, unturned. These wooden ashtrays. Are yeah, they're really we're nice. very skeptical about us using wooden ashtrays, but it's just, it adds that like difference from every other ashtray that every other Scar Lounge carries that it's like you see a brand on them. You know, and it's somebody else's brand, not yours. Yeah, yeah. You know? By the way, this Maduro is really good. It's delicious. Yeah. I'm really yeah, enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Maduro from, uh, from Maduro. Thank you guys. I'm on my second cigar. How long have we been doing this? How He's long, got a very long, little time. Very, how many minutes? minutes? Very heavy, very heavy draw. <laughs> not, it hasn't oh, been 45, yeah, 45 minutes. I'll, 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 I'll <laughs> a minute. Yeah. I have a heavy draw. So that's why when I tell you. It's an hour. Okay. Yeah. It's, that's why yeah, I tell you it's easy. We can keep going forever. Yeah. We'll just stay here all day. Exactly. We'll have lunch. Take a break, have dinner, and do it all day long. Podcast. Bring one of those uh, cowboy ribeyes that are aged in uh, Woodford Reserve for forty days, please. There you go. Oh yeah. 
I said it last night. You didn't tell me all that. Yeah, I told, uh, I told what's her name, Gina. Yeah, that, right, the bartender. Gina. Yeah. How yeah, many? I told Gina, I'm like, oh, you know, let me see a menu. She's like, the kitchen's closed. I'm like, I know, I'm looking for tomorrow. She's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that, look at the menu. I mean, how many cigar bars you're going to see has that variety, right? You've got filet, you've got lamb chops, you've got a, oh. you know, a, a 40 day chavapa, <laughs> right? So talk about the Albanian flair, right? So and we got chavapa burger too. Yeah. There you I go. I saw that last night. Yeah, really I, know. Delicious. I don't know what to get. Yeah, it's yeah. very good. Unfortunately in Florida, it's actually uh, strict on having food with a cigar lounge. Yeah. It is so here most, too, actually. Is it really? Yeah, there's only a few places, right? That have food yeah, with cigars. They just have to have a special license and meet oh, the state requirements. But, but I'm saying there, there are not many lounges in Michigan that serve food. Yeah. It, Give or take, yeah. There's well, only a select few, I a lot guess. Of people too that know about cigars, they're not knowing the food spectrum of it as, as well either. You know, you yeah. kind of just open up the cigar with the liquor, so that's more so why. Yeah. Else. Yeah. Yeah. So in Florida, if you're gonna do it, um, you need to have an actual separate like suite if you're in the same plaza or a separate building that you're cooking in. Wow. And then you can bring in the food over. Uh, so that's why I told Mark, I'm like, you know, we sold the restaurants that my family owned. Yeah. So they sold the whole concept. And I told Mark, I'm like, yo, we need to open up a cigar lounge, just like Don Cristo's, you know, just down here in Florida. I'm like, but it'd be perfect. I wish I had this. I can see a partnership, you know, Don Cristo's Florida edition, hey. you know, and hey. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, Zach Mark doesn't sound good like Don Cristo's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, unfortunately, in Florida, the law is definitely a little more strict. Like, you can get a license to do it here, no problem. Like Zach said, it's got to be a completely separate building. Um, the way that some people get around it is they have a the building is divided in half, and then the second part's a different address. So legally, it's okay. Yeah. So there's like three lounges that we've uh, been to that are able to serve food. Yeah. But yeah, most of them are going to be cigars and liquor at most. And then you can bring food in sometimes. I noticed that in New York, in New York is very strict too. New York, New Jersey. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I want I think some of them like they're only allowed to serve like like tapas like small appetizers. And Would stuff. you say topless? <laughs> I, I, you know what? I, heard. I knew he was going to say that. <laughs> I swear I'm to like, God, wait, I was which, for which one? Well, well, like, so so real stuff quick. They, so they're stuff only that's allowed to serve. serve you topless, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you in Florida that's next week. Cigar lounge in America, by the way. Right? Yeah. <laughs> what were you going to say? So back to what you guys were talking about with like starting off with the one cigar. Like I personally know a guy that started a cigar company with his family as well. And we can talk about the name off air, but like they came out with right off the rip, like 12 different lines of cigars. And it was like, when they asked us to try it, it was very hard to even give an honest opinion because, you know, I'm, I'm more of like a, a Toro Churchill Robusto type of smoker, you know, with the size. And these guys had everything from a double Corona to a Gordo. And, they all had the, all the big ones all the big ones mm -hmm. and then like a, a few small ones but it was so hard to taste them because different sizes sizes had different profiles you of know course, what i mean yeah. so it's like i feel like you know i feel like they're they're kind of struggling to get off the ground because i feel like they just they hit you in the face all at once versus like kind of bring it in and slow which you guys are doing which to my, my opinion is much better than rushing and saying here you go i got 13 different lines can you try them all today and give me your honest yeah, opinion exactly. really perfect one line 100 percent. well yeah because right? then too it's like okay yeah a year or two later here's the new one yeah. okay i know this is a great cigar yeah. i'm sure this one's going to be just as good but then you can focus on this one and say okay yeah this one's just as good if not better yeah and then you know if it's not then you can say okay i don't really want this one but we'll keep the rest of your stuff plus yeah. like smoking 13 sticks in one day your palate's going to be kind of like messed up a little bit it's good yeah. it's going to disintegrate man <laughs> yeah. what, do you, what do you what do you do to reset your palate Whiskey. <laughs> yeah, I know or that. Coffee. It's a good you know, idea. Yeah, yeah. coffee is the best way. I usually smoke a menthol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, coffee and then like uh, soda water are the two best ways to help like reset the palate. Yeah. What do you do? Gargle it and then spit it back out? <laughs> <laughs> no, you just drink it. Or like oh, even, sorry. Um, especially if you retrohale. So not for you, but no, if you definitely smell not. like coffee beans, that's a great way to help reset the palate. It's good you to learned know. it at the airport when you were trying to clone it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just about to say that. <laughs> Telepathy, huh? It is. That's it. Well, so what's great about this industry, too, is a lot of these uh, bigger brands are starting to do these training sort of things where they have, they give you different leaves that are rolled up in like a Fuma to try, like a little cigarillo. So you try the different leaves to help experience the flavor. And they'll tell you, like, you know, 
in between, you got to reset your palate somehow. So coffee always comes up. Sometimes like soda water is good. Um, That's so, good to know. Yeah, they're about coffee beans too as well. Yeah, so the industry is trying to help teach people, consumers, and even you know people that are in the industry how to actually taste the difference in cigars, how to reset your palate. Uh, that's becoming more popular. A lot of the bigger brands like uh, La Aurora is doing it. Aganor Salif is doing it. They'll come to the lounges and do trainings with you know you and the employees. I, I know Drew Estate. They, they, they do offer it too. They offer training. Um, J.C. Newman. Monte Cristo, J.C. Newman. They all offer training for the staff and you know for any customers that want to engage. I mean, it's good to know because the next day I go on a 10 cigar bender, I'll know how to reset my palate <laughs> you gotta have every two or three sticks. <laughs> I, I was at the uh, Monte Cristo Lounge in Vegas, and a, and a uh, dude I met over there smoking, he said that he does it with chocolate. Chocolate's good too, yeah. Yeah, yeah he uses chocolate. And chocolate. Says, like dark yeah. powder. Yeah, yeah. And he, yeah. He'll, literally, he says he'll, he, he, so every time between cigars. And that helps with the he likes too. To go, he likes to go between various, like he'll completely different sides of the spectrum, right? So he'll always reset, he said, with a piece of chocolate and he had a little chocolate in his pocket. Like what, he like lets it melt in his mouth? <laughs> lets it melt in his mouth, not in his hand. <laughs> so we have a customer that when he switches from, when he finishes a cigar, he throws back a shot of espresso. Yeah. Drinks like straight, no sugar, no nothing, yeah. just straight espresso, and then he goes, grabs another cigar. Yeah. And then chocolate, yeah, that's another great one. I mean, does he stay up for like three days straight? <laughs> now need a shot of espresso? Not me, I go right to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I would drink coffee and literally go to sleep right after. Especially in college, you know, I mean, I was having like six, seven coffees a day. It probably was not healthy, but I would drink coffee at You survived. Midnight. I did survive. I survived. <laughs> I would drink coffee at midnight. <laughs> so outside of outside of Bissa, right? Not asking to promote any other brand, but like, what is your other preferred stick if you weren't smoking? Let's say that you ended up in cherries. You know, New York City yeah, or, you know, Vegas and, and well, they don't have it. Mine has changed so many times. It depends. In, in New York City, you know, I'm not buying a cigar over there. <laughs> yeah. you know, a late hour that's $27 in Florida is $98 in New York City. So, so can I tell you something? I went to, I was in a, going, flying in Thank to you. New York for a funeral with my dad. And we're like, we have four hours to kill. What are we going to do? We're going we're gonna to go smoke. Thank you. Thank you so much. And so, where do we go? We went to what was it? Carnegie Hall. Was Carnegie, that the name of the, the place? Carnegie Room? The Carnegie Room, Manhattan. In Manhattan, it's an awesome place. And so we, we go in there. We order a couple drinks, you know, some finger foods, and I lo- they give us a cigar list. It was only like ten sticks on the on the menu, and they don't even have a humidor. Like they're yeah. in the center council, like the center wall. They've got some like wall humidors, real small. Very and small. And then everything else is behind the bar. You have to order mm, yeah. from the bartender. That's how I was in, uh, in Soho. I was going to say, a lot what? of places out there, they have that one menu with like 10 different cigars, and they're all outrageously priced, which I know a lot of the times it's not their fault, but sometimes we'll go, they'll go even higher. And for the atmosphere, they charge you, basically. So on the menu, do you know that for their house stick, we paid just for the regular, I think it was a Habano or whatever, Connecticut, whatever it was. $27? It was $28 yeah. bucks for a house stick. We went to if a place we, out if there. We served, there. If we served if we serve twenty dollar house sticks here, I'd be flying to work. I wouldn't be driving to work. It just that's crazy. I you wouldn't I have saw, to work. I, I yeah, I, I wouldn't have to work. I thought I saw a helicopter land on the roof. No, you know, it definitely wasn't me. <laughs> that was when Chris just came. Oh, Chris. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. He's, he's got the rough floor. We had the personal yeah. helicopter. I, I don't remember what it was called, but one time we went to New York and it was kind of like a library themed that lounge that's that we went to. It, was it, it might be because the name sounds familiar. Is it Manhattan downtown? Right, yeah, yeah. Sort of like it's, two, yeah, it's two levels. Yeah, it's got to be the Carnegie, Carnegie room because very the old school. Is, uh, it is, yeah. super Doodle. super old school. Yeah, the really Doodle nice. Lounge. They're all dressed it, in tuxes. I think it was on a corner. Yes, that's it. That's yeah. it. That's oh, it's it. Gone upstairs. Remember that? That's it. Yeah, I didn't know oh, either. That's probably where they were going. Remember, we we're wondering, we're like, yes, where the was. hell they keep going into over yeah. there? It looks like a lot old library. Yeah, all wood grain everywhere. Yeah, we were. I was gonna say, yeah, I guess it's the same place. We were looking at their house sticks. I'm like, jeez, can't. So when we flew in, my cousins took us over there, and then then they took us to Chinatown to have dinner after that which i thought was funny it was good though what else did you guys do in chinatown do you guys have any massages <laughs> uh there's no time on the record <laughs> there's all i mean time. i had plenty of time it was 30 second massage. No, so. <laughs> <laughs> all the time i need honesty is the best policy <laughs> i have yeah, no was, idea what you're talking about it, it, <laughs> your girl's watching <laughs> Which one? <laughs> okay. So, right. you know, I'll tell you. I mean, speaking of like expensive, even in California, I went to just like a regular uh, tobacco shop 
you know, and I was noticing cigars that were, you know, $10 sticks here all day, 30, 40 bucks, right? And I'm like, why, why is your cigar so expensive? I know what these things cost. I know what retail is. I know what wholesale yeah. is. Yeah. And, you know, he's like, oh, we have a big problem here with, uh, you know, over there, they go through resell, you know, resellers, right? They're not, they don't have OTPs and a lot of a big cigar place didn't have their own OTP. So and I'm like, you know, and he's like, it's just, you got to wait for your supply. So we've got to mark them up. And I'm like, that's just, uh, it's ridiculous. Right? Yeah, so, so I was in a, a Nanuet in New York, right? And there's a place over there called Dad Cigar. And, you know, they're partners with another place called Mom Cigar. But Mom Cigar is a warehouse, but Dad Cigar is just like a small lounge area. And they buy all, well, not all, but they buy most of their cigars from Corona Cigar Company. Interesting. Just online. Yeah. You know, at the retail price at whatever they sell it for. From Florida? Yeah, from mark Florida. It up. Yeah. And then they ship it over and then they mark it up even more. So, like a 12 Fuente curly head, right? We keep boxes on the, like, at our houses just because they're cheap sticks. They're pretty decent. Good, yeah, and if our family comes over, you know, we could just hand them out those. You know, well, I guess now we have our own stick. Yeah. But, you know, we can hand them those cigars. And we would buy a box in Florida. You could buy house. a box of, you could buy a box of, uh, it's like $70. Seven, yeah, for 25 or something like that. Yeah, yeah for, so 25 Yeah, the curly stick, head's very, it's a cheaper stick. Yeah. We had a, a, my cousin Chris's wedding in New York, and I'm like, oh, we need to get cigars. Totally forgot to bring some, right? Go to Dad's Cigar to pick some up. It was $147 for a box. I'm like, what the hell is going on? He's like, ah, oh, the taxes, this and that. And I'm like, man, at Corona Cigars, it's $70. He's like, oh, I know, we buy it from him. I'm like, no wonder why you're marking them up. You're charging double. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Making the same percentages. A lot of New Yorkers go out to Jersey to get their their sticks. Yeah, is what I was told by a few of my cousins in New York. Like they, that's their only choice because yeah. he said the the tax on them is so heavy that he's like, we just don't buy cigars in New York anymore. Like we'll go to the other local spots just to support and try to help them because obviously it's tough for them now because of their tax markup. But he said we drive out to Jersey to go get our. I mean, I would sticks. just order online if I was them. Yeah, you know you should. I wouldn't even waste yeah. my time going yeah. driving out to cigar places. But if you're yeah. close enough to that that bridge, you know you can kind yeah. of just. Sometimes you just want it now. Yeah, right? you don't want to yeah. wait. You still get hit with the tax online. It's not that. nearly as bad. Yeah. But you do get yeah, a little yeah, bit of a tax. Yeah, it, yeah, it's nowhere near though. Nowhere the, near no. paying the state tax. No, no. Yeah, I guess it makes sense to go to New Jersey because yeah. we went to New Jersey for a bit after our New York trip, did a podcast there, and their prices are very close to ours in Florida. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, and, and a lot of those companies are actually based out of like Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, right. So it's like they're selling through their Pennsylvania company or Connecticut you know, or something. Like that. But they have you know a lounge in Jersey, you know. But, yeah, and they just transport like, the cigars. Like we get a lot of online orders from New York, you know, just so they don't have to deal with that tax. And I'm sure Corona Cigars does too. You know, I'm sure you know <laughs> big retailers, uh, you know, JR Cigars, whatever. Yeah, Cigar International, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, what, what's what's your guys' uh, funniest moment on podcasting so far? What do you guys think about? What makes you funniest uh, moment? Does anything guys, come to mind? There's like so a many. mishap or something that's any, said or no, 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 ash competition. Your ash competition. Oh yeah, we did uh, episode four oh, oh, very early fun, on. Man. We did a long ash competition between all of us, and someone at this <laughs> table was <laughs> cheating. <laughs> Sorry, ash. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, someone put a paper clip in their cigar. To help keep the ash on. Who was it? Why'd you look at me? Why'd you automatically look at me? <laughs> it was you, wasn't it? It was me. Why'd you look at me? That's so funny. So anyway, so we're getting ready for this ash competition, and I'm like, I want to win, you know. So you know, we always heard the stories of like uh, these lawyers. I would put a, a you know pin in their and cigar. paper clip. Yeah, paper clip in their cigar, you know to misdirect the jury or Winston Churchill would put one in his cigar so people would listen to him and watch him. Uh, so I'm like, let me try it. Let me try it out. So I took, you know, a stainless steel paper clip, stretched it out, rolled it out, make sure it was like nice and straight. And I shoved it at the end of the cigar. So I'm smoking it and the metal, it's all <laughs> well, the, well, no, it didn't stick out at all. So they actually didn't see it until this point. The metal was, you know, expanding because it was getting hot. So the ash separated like at one point in the middle. So Alex is just looking at it and he's like, what? I've never seen an ash do that. You know, cause it looked like a floating ash. So what it was is like, yeah. When, when you have the ash, there's like a point where you have like a crack in it, like where it should have fallen. So he had like three cracks on this one ash. 
So the finally he's like, I, th- I think Zach's cheating. I'm like, oh, I'm not cheating. Then I'm holding my cigar under the table. <laughs> and he's like, oh, let me see that cigar. Let me see it. I'm like, I'm like, look, you can see it. You know, <laughs> I'm showing him straight on. I think the funniest thing is like when you'll sit there and you smoke like this, you'll see people not trying to break it up. So uncomfortable. One day we yeah, were smoking. Yeah, I do sometimes. I, I would say, because <laughs> one of my go-tos, we talked about other cigars as well. Like one of my top five favorite cigars is the uh, Fuente 77 Shark. Have you guys tried that yet? It yeah, comes out uh, once a year. I think Mark oh, and I have had it. It's a phenomenal <laughs> stick, right? It's amazing. But we were smoking once, um, and literally, I'm like, come on, quit babying that. Cigar. Turn your ash, you know, turn it over. Let me see if it falls. He turns it over. I'm like, but to make a long story short, literally took it down to like where my finger is. He even took the wrapper off. And it's, it was, were you using a paper clip? Now that I think about it. <laughs> I'm like, he took it off. I've never, yeah, he's never saw an ash. Might have a picture somewhere. Yeah, it, it literally you know, went I can all the way I've down. sent you pictures of what I've done with this, out, right? Know, so, yeah. and I'm like, dude. Yeah, those are crazy. Yeah. yeah. I was like standing like this. Him and I were laying down on the ground at the cigar bar. Just like, <laughs> That's how, like, we, were, we couldn't even relax anymore. You know, now it's just like, I have a job to do. I have to make sure this ash goes all I'm, the way I'm like down. waiting for his finger, but he held it slow, like, you know, just calm the whole time. I don't even think like, I took movements. off the wrapper. Well, you took it off at the very end. At the, where, just because, remember, it wasn't going to. I thought I smoked right. like half of it or something. <laughs> the rapper? I've, I've been there before. Yeah, sometimes it happens. Yeah, sometimes if I'm like focused and I'm just cheaping a cigar. You're like, what's that plastic like taste? That sometimes too, man. So I, it was just the other day. He was legit smoking a cigar. I'm like, I'm smiling. Like, what is that smell? Dude? I'm like, I'm like, burning the ashtray. And I'm yeah. looking like, dude, I'm like, your rapper's about to catch on fire. And he's like, oh shit. And then I'll wrap it. Yeah, you can smell it right away. Yeah. It adds to the flavor. Would you say you, yeah, you're yeah, chiefing yeah. the cigar? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah smoking it quick. I don't know. What do you want? That's all these Florida terms. Start using that name. These, these are Florida slangs. <laughs> <laughs> think oh, about yeah, it might be a Florida thing. He's thinking chief in. He's thinking I about know. the L- Okay, I, I just, yeah, yeah, just yeah, yeah. that's where it comes from. He just <laughs> trying, he just trying to keep it professional online. I feel like uh, other funny things that we happened is like uh, we've recorded a few podcasts where you know not gonna point any fingers here, but. Uh, the mics weren't plugged in, so to speak. So we record an entire hour. You can't point fingers because you have to point it yourself. <laughs> you know, we did. That's we not entire, funny though. I don't get. That's not funny at all. It's not funny. It's funny after the fact because, like, you know, you're you're like you wait a week later to upload it, and there's nothing to upload. Oh my god. We did, um, yeah, we did. Uh, we found it at your house. It was yeah, it was my house. Yeah. So it was a, a morning cigar thing, and we have a nice back outdoor patio, right? You know, you see the woods and stuff. So. We're like, all right, we're gonna film in my house, um, like morning cigars. That's all we're gonna talk about. And uh, I made, you know, some Turkish coffee, and we're all drinking. And we did this whole podcast. It was great. Wait, why did I say any Turkish coffee? Albanian man? coffee. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's go. go. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. All right, cool. Come all right. on, Zach. <laughs> you know, hey, some people get offended with. <laughs> <laughs> but I always call it Albanian coffee. But anyway, so I make this coffee, which is not as good as my mom's. My mom makes it fantastic. Which thank God. We record a second episode where the mics actually work and my mom made it for us. But, uh, yeah. So everything was better. <laughs> we all get, they get home, they look at the thing, and they're like, audio didn't record. I'm like, are you serious? I'm like, what the hell? We did all this work. We set up everything. He's like, all right, we'll have it again. We'll have it again. You know, so now we're set up for it. So do you guys, do you guys smoke at home? Has anyone, awesome. has anyone created a smoke room inside yet? Not yet. Well, we're technically. We're both technically, talking about technically. Well, well, kind of. Yeah, technically. Yeah, so our studio is actually in my garage. That, nice. that doesn't count, though. No, no, not inside, inside. Yeah. My next house, though, it's going to have a dedicated cigar room. He's looking at doing it. I'm looking at doing it. You guys aren't married yet, though, right? Not yet. Oh, that's, almost. I mean, I've gotten to the point now, I told right? Her to it's leave a the clothes outside the, the door. My wife will wake up in uh, the morning. A cigar room in the, the garage? Door. Yeah. Well, no, not, I'm going to have a dedicated cigar room. I'm going to try until my best she, to Until you guys it. sign those papers, my friend, shit changes. True. See, like, I have to be home in 30 minutes or I'm in trouble for the week. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> A no, week. That's not as, bad. as I was just saying, got, sometimes we've closed down cigar lounges before. We'll go in the car, grab sticks to go, put the sunroof down, put some music on, just chill and just drive and smoke, right? But then, like, I've got to take my kids to school the next day. My wife's like, you know, the kid's backpack is there. The kid's jacket's in the back seat from when I took oh, them. I didn't even realize. Dude. Oh, no. And, I, and then I'm wondering sticks. why she's mad, right? And How I, long were you in the doghouse for? Oh, man. Something. Uh, Usually by the end of the day, it's uh, gone. But yeah, no, yeah. seriously, she's like, "You realize you went to school smelling like cigars, right?" I'm like, "I, I didn't know it was in the back." You it's know. Not a terrible thing to go to school smelling. Like that. <laughs> Could be worse. Yeah. So, so funny story. I got pulled over last night, and you know, as I'm trying you to too? talk, huh? Oh, <laughs> so I'm trying to talk my way out of not getting a ticket, which thank God it worked. This cop goes, 
He goes, were you smoking cigars? And I was like, yeah, I was. I said, I got a cigar bar in Shelby Township. He goes, yo, I love smoking cigars, this come and through. that. And that's, so yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. like, I've been wanting to come. And so, like, literally, I think that got me out of a ticket. And I was so thankful because I was going pretty over the speed limit. 85 in residential, I think that's... Yeah. So, it's easy. It's easy to speed on these roads. <laughs> it is. A haul road, it's easy. It's a straight shot. It's uh, It'll get you going. So got blacked out, black windshield, black side <laughs> windows. That's so, not my car. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, you flew right by me. He goes, you didn't see me? I'm like, honestly, no. I said, my, I, sir, I had my hands on, on the steering wheel, and I was looking straight Eyes ahead. Forward. I said, I wasn't wandering around. Yeah. So did he ask for cigars, or did you offer him? Huh? Did you offer him cigars? <laughs> I told him to come by, and I would obviously take care of him. But I mean, I had no way. To, who knows when he's going to come in? You know, but he's fired after listening to this podcast. Could you imagine? That's crazy. Because <laughs> we invited him to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he shows up. Here's your ticket. I was, I was out of paper last night. We're, we're waiting for a confession. <laughs> it's okay. You won't see this. How fast next were you week. going? Like 15 over? Or? Oh, no, it was 45. 40 I was going. Over. I was going 88. 40 over. 45. Yeah. Damn. In Florida, you get like arrested for that. You, yeah, could, you, can, you yeah. can get arrested in Michigan too, but I, he was such a cool. He was such a cool guy, and I mean, I was like straightforward with him. I was like, "Yeah, I know I fucked up." I'm like, you know, yeah. If you're not being, what do you want asshole. me to say? You know what I mean? It's, as long as you're respectful, not a dick. I feel like most of the time they'll let you off, but I just couldn't believe I got let off. And the first thing I need to learn from you. <laughs> My brother always says, he goes, you always get so lucky. You always get out of tickets, this and that. Perfect. And I get pulled over, and I'm thinking, first thing that runs to my head, I was like, I wonder if I can get out of this ticket, too, and then I could just rub it in Christopher's face. He and was, sure enough, I did. We have a, a bar in the township, and he, was, he woke up late, you know, so he's rushing to get there. And you got what? Pulled over going like 105 off of the expressway onto yeah. the, like, the main road. I was you know? flying. So the cop pulled him over, and Donnie's like, oh, I'm late for, you know, I got to open up the bar. Just stab my I'm so sorry. Like, you know, my mistake. Cops said, okay, just get, get there safe, please. Slow down a little bit. I'm thinking myself, I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, this is me. Get out of the car. What do you have in the car? Why are you speeding? They make him grab his ankles, everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were the guy on TikTok I got pulled over that was twerking outside. Yes, it was me. <laughs> Cops said, let me see you walk in line. He's twerking, walking in line at the same time. The I was like, what the fuck? Does that always get to leave the tickets? The, ti- the title of that TikTok was gripping shit. these cheeks. <laughs> Oh. It's like me. I was, I was driving home. We had something called Halloween Horror Nights, right? It's at Universal Studios. I was driving home probably about midnight, 1 a.m. And I was dropping everyone off. And I'm going 98 in a 60. You know, and I'm like, I see this cop. And I was in a truck. So I see this cop, like, just in the side of the road. And I'm like, he's going to pull me over. So as soon as, like, I saw his lights turn on. He didn't turn on his red and blues. He just kind of, you know, turned on his headlights. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, he's coming after me. So immediately starts slowing down. Finally, he got out on the road, turned turn on his emergency lights, pulls me over, <coughs> grabs my ID. You know, I'm like, hey, so you know, I got, here's my ID. I got concealed carry on me, you know, this and that. So he's like, he's like, all right, no problem. Walks to the car, comes back, and he's like, so Zach, uh, you live on uh, so-and-so court? And I'm like, yeah, yes, sir. He's like, your family uh, owns Giovanni's? And I'm like, yes, sir. He's like, all right, I'll be right back. He goes back, comes back. He's like, he's like, I can't give you a warning this time because, you know, my sergeant's with me. He's like, but I gave you a ticket for like, you know. Uh, Ten over. Yeah, you no, know, it was like, it was like a, a disobeying a traffic sign or something. So it was a $100 ticket. You know, no points, no nothing. Just, you know, and I'm like, I'm like, thank God. Because yeah, he could have taken my license away. He could have. One, one, one thing? I did. One thing. Well, I mean, he was doing it, so I thought it was okay. One thing. He, he, <laughs> he did. It. Yeah, in theory, right for the In theory, he can give you the ticket, and then you just go to court and contest it. And he doesn't show up. I was not about to contest that ticket. <laughs> we don't say it there. He would have shown up. <laughs> He'd be like, "I cut this motherfucker a break. <laughs> He's taking me to court." <laughs> it's the last time I go, Giovanni's. But the, yeah. the thing is, like, you pay to go. He's being paid to go. Mm. Yeah. So. See, this is why you get all your tickets, because you think this way. <laughs> it's the engineer way. I don't know. How many lighters do you guys own? Uh, on the trip here, I looked around just my kitchen, and I found like five, and I just put them all in my bag. Yeah, I bought five, too. Yeah. I have like three at my house, one in my locker at Corona. Thankfully, we get a bunch of them And I have a new one, so five. I like that one. How many, how many I love this one. do you own? 
I think like 25. Dude, this guy yeah. has an obsession with lighters. If he goes somewhere, he can go to Ohio and he'll stop at like a, a convenience store, but Ooh, that's a nice lighter and he'll buy it. Like that's just how it. I'm kind of the same way, yeah. Florida last time, how many lighters did you come back with? Like open sex I, I don't mind when he does that because he hands out a couple of them to us too. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, of course. Well, I was, when, when I was in Florida with my wife, there's a cigar, thankfully there's a cigar bar literally like right across the street. And so I would go there and these guys have, have uh, you guys saying? yeah. Okay. And so these guys are, were like Opus, like Fuente, like certified or something, right? Because, huh? Sweethearts, right? No, I don't know what the name was. Oh. No, not Sweethearts. Sweethearts was, uh, oh, that's Fuente. one in Tampa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was yeah. in Sweethearts does not sound like a Scar Lounge, by the way. No, it's not. <laughs> it sounds like a brothel for men. <laughs> Because that's what it is. <laughs> and they close at 9 p.m., everyone. <laughs> Open back up at 10 for cleanup. That's where you learn about Leave that part out, too. <laughs> so, that's where you learn to grab his ankles. So, <laughs> so, oh so listen. Let's see, I get sidetracked. So we went there, and these guys had, like, the whole Fuente line. And, like, I was talking to, like, the owner's son, and he was, like, for us to do, like, a huge Fuente event, like, they had to buy, like, $100,000 worth of Fuente cigars, and they had to create their own humidor with just Fuente, and... They had their whole lighter line, and I was like in heaven. They had like all these all these lighters that I couldn't find anywhere online to buy. They just had them display there like it was nothing. So I bought this lighter. Actually, I bought four of them, but the one that I used all week, they were like the little ones with the matte black with like the red letters. They had like the Fuente symbol on yeah, them. Yeah. So I bought all the colors, right? So the one I used, I had in my bag, and I had my wife put it, the rest of them, in her suitcase. So I'm in the airport. They took they took my lighter, yeah. and I was so pissed. And I, I had like a little butane thing and my lighter because I was just like packing all my shit to go, you know. Yeah. And the guy's like, "What's this?" He looks at it. He's like, "What's this?" You know this thing. I'm like, "I'm like fuck. I'm not supposed to have lighters." Torch I'm like, lighter. "I'm, I'm torch. a torch yeah. lighter." He paid more for the lighter than he did plane ticket. Legit. <laughs> and and so he's like, "It happens." He goes, "I gotta take this." Yeah. I, I look at him. I, he's a TSA guy. I'm like the fuck you mean you gotta take it I'm like, just give it to me back he goes no i can't i can't allow you he goes you have unless you want to go take it back and uh take it back to where you're from you know or who you're with or whatever i'm like i'm like my plane leaves in 20 minutes i said i said i paid a lot of money for that and said you're just gonna go off and use my fucking lighter to go sm smoke cigarettes on your brakes yes yeah and he <laughs> gave me the smirk and i was getting ready to cause a scene but i was like i don't want to go to jail in florida you know what i mean I, would, I, would I agree. I, didn't know I agree. You. If, 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 <laughs> now, now I know you. So now, now if that ever happens, you're the have first to. phone call that I make. So yeah, don't ignore me. Yeah, you said it. <laughs> I, I guarantee two hours. That's it. I guarantee it. There you go. So I learned my lesson. Never again. That's for sure. So whenever I buy lighters, now it's, I'll leave them yeah. in somebody's suitcase that they go and they check in. Because I was so sad. That lighter was so beautiful. Yeah. I've never had an issue myself because I've packed them in my carry-ons and stuff before. And you never had an issue? I, I haven't, no. Wow. So either they just missed it or whatever. They but totally it, yeah. But I know that he got one of his yes, taken yes. away. So, so I was like, okay, from now on, let's just play it safe. I always put them in a check bag. So do you think they'll take mine? My fly back? No, that's a soft one. Don't. I, I wouldn't even take that chance. But yeah, yeah. put it in my What if a guy bag? wants to be a dick? He can do that's it, right? Yeah, and you can't true. do shit yeah, about so, it. So, so do we check it in his bag, you're saying? 100%. Okay. I would not. I would not. And put drain that, the liquid? Are, the it's okay. We've already talked I would about not this. Be, you don't need to drain, but I would not put that in your carry-on. You guys have a bag you're checking yeah, yeah, yeah. in? 100% I would check. put okay. that in the check-in bag. You can just leave it here. I'll take care of it. <laughs> it's honestly taking me so long to find one. fine DuPont lighter you have there? He just so he's it's not a Chinese knockoff though, right? No, no, he Those just got it. all around yeah. too. No, it's a Korean we, knockoff. <laughs> I, I, had, I had I had a knockoff uh, Dupont. It didn't have a Dupont name. Up. There's someone that comes here, and uh, you know, you open it, you hear that ding. You know, and the whole you know, it's it's got a soft ping actually, but mine had a, a ping to it. Does that one have a ping? Yeah. Okay. Shit. But it's not that. I think that line doesn't. The ping isn't as. Uh, it's not prominent. Yeah, it's not. It's not as prominent. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, one of the guys you know I'm talking about has has a Dupont he here as well. Same oh, is it the same one? Yeah. yeah it's but you one. hear it and it's got a ding, you know. Some of them are better than others. But mine so, was yeah. louder, yeah. right? So I'm like, hey, you know, check out my my lighter. You know, I go, it costs five dollars. It's like this is two thousand. Doesn't matter. My ping is louder. Like, yeah, but it's not as nice. I go, it doesn't matter. It's all about go, no the one ping. can even hear your ping. It's all I go, about Guys, the ping. Can you hear his ping? I'm like, and everyone starts looking around. You know, it's pretty funny. We're sitting right there. At the I went table. to one of the lounges that we live near. Sense, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> one of the lounges we live near. Uh, the owner pulled out two different lighters. He's like, hey, I don't know why he was doing it, but I zoned in and he's talking to his employees like, 
listen to the ping. Which one sounds better? And he's like, ping, 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 ping. And they're like, oh, that one sounds better. And the other customer's like, no, that one sounds better. And I'm just like, what is going on right now? But it's all about the ping. You're absolutely right. Yeah, the, the DuPont's ones, they're supposed to be like soft. Like you're just supposed to like, you're supposed to personally hear it. Not like yeah. the whole entire room, basically. It's My- like their whole take on it. My cousin that we were best man for, he actually bought me a DuPont lighter, and it was the gray and black one. It had the dual flame. <coughs> it was. It's, it's, it's the got tor- the jet, torch. It's got the, the, the torch and then the soft light. Oh, it's so whoa, whoa. Is, dude. I don't have that. I need where's, that. Where's it at? It's at home. Uh, how did you not bring it for the show? Oh, my uh, God. Honestly, I wasn't thinking. Well, tonight. You know bring DuPont's it tonight. Not paying us I'll bring it tonight. Advertise. I mean, I'm not going back home. <laughs> It's bad. It's bad as hell, man. I fucking love it. I'll pick it up on my way. Shuan, go ahead. (laughs) I love it. Yeah. (laughs) That's when you know cigar people are obsessed. About your guys' cigars, which is nice. Like, a lot of people, just like the presentation itself, draw, oh, what's this? You know, like, what's this all about? You know, like, granted, like, we're probably, I think, the only Albanians in Michigan that own a cigar lounge, I think, I would say. Yeah. Right? I would so say right the only away, one we're going to. I don't know if there's any. Yeah, yeah. So, so right away, but, like they know, like they see the Albanian, like oh, like typical, like oh, you guys Albanian, so you got the Albanian scars. I'm like, yeah, but it's actually like very good. So like, what's nice about going back to what Donnie said 20, 30 minutes ago about having just like the sizes and not like a multiple. I'm a fan. So many of them, like they'll try, they'll go, they'll see it, and they're not a hundred options for them to pick, so they're trying it and they're actually liking it. You know, like non-Albanians, you know, Albanians grab it, they see the Albanian eagle, so they're like, oh, Albanian eagle, perfect, I'm taking it. You know what I mean? So they'll be drawn to it, but like the other customers that are not Albanian, they'll smoke it and they end up loving it. And they, yeah. that's what they usually smoke now. Like I got a lot of regulars that that's what their choice is. You know what I mean? So that's great. That's great. It's definitely, I feel like getting out there for sure. Definitely like that, that brand itself. You know what I mean? Cause a lot of customers, I mean, we just had a guy, this was, I want to say like a week ago, he called and said like, Hey, do you guys have the base of cigars? And I'm like, you know, my bartender, he didn't realize what it was at first. Cause he just didn't understand what he was saying. And then I'm like, yes, we do. I'm like, we have boxes up there. He's like, okay, perfect. He's like, I'm gonna buy two boxes, you know. So, wow. like I said, it's definitely getting out there for sure, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And we're grateful for you guys, you know, yeah. for giving us the opportunity and pushing absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we use you guys as an example. Uh, I just like, yeah, we always talk about you guys on yeah, other podcasts. All the time, yeah. Appreciate on, that. On the podcast to other cigar lounges, I'm like, you know, they'll look at our cigar, and of course, they're gonna see a small company, you know. Especially in Florida, they really don't know Albanians, you know. Yeah. Uh, Florida is like the capital for yeah. cigars in the United States. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, if you educate people and you tell them, you know, hey, try this cigar. I'm like, they'll come back for it. Yeah. You know. And Absolutely, like, they will. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like at Don Cristos in Michigan. I'm like, they sell our cigar like crazy, you know. But they're also telling people, hey, try this cigar. You know, hey, I, I don't know what I want to smoke, you know. So try basic cigar. If you don't like, or not, if you don't like cigars. If you're not, if you don't smoke cigars often, or you smoke them all the time, you're but it's a, amazing. it's a, it's a very good price cigar as well, right? Yeah. You know, you've got guys who are just going golf and just want a cigar to, you know, buff on, and they'll go out and spend twenty bucks and not know what they're getting, right? But, you know, it's it's interesting though when we talk about, you know, people and cigar smoking, right? We were at this uh, smoke shop uh, probably like two weeks ago because I live thirty some minutes from here, right? So sometimes he'll meet me out in my area, right, to to smoke, and and he's sitting down next to me, we're smoking. And uh, this 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 dude walks up and he sits you know he sits down next to Donnie on the other side and we just start talking. He's on the phone so he's not even paying attention. And I'm like, where are you from? And he's from a town an hour from here. I'm like, what do you? Why did you move up here? Right? And he ended up be, like being a neighbor next to my. Uh, I have a small cottage. Yeah. And he literally moved two do- two doors down. Right? He's like, I moved out here to be closer to the cigar lounges because where I live there's none. I go, you moved to be closer to cigar lounges, right? He smokes a lot. He smokes every a lot, day, right? Every day. So, so So he's they, a cigar guy. He's, yeah, yeah, he's a cigar guy. But, but cigar naturally, guy. I don't think people realize the the, you know, how much the hobby really draws you in, right? But literally, we started talking and he's like, "Yeah, I come here because it's close to my house, but sometimes they'll drive out to Shelby." And then he mentions Don, I go, "Well, here's Don Crystal right here." He's like, "Get out of here." He's like, "I go to your place all the time when I want food and I want to sit down and I really want to have a great environment." He's like, "I go to Don Crystal's all the time." So I've never, I've never seen them before, but literally moved from over an hour away just to be closer to cigar. You got a lot of people that drive to go to. There was a guy here Wednesday night on oh, Wednesday night, actually Wednesday day, but he stayed till literally Wednesday night. Um, he drove from Tawas, and he was like, you know, I. Which is like, how far is it? I would they say don't about know. Two and a half, three hours. Yeah, so it's, it's a hike. He, 
he does a lot of business in like Detroit area, but he's like, I don't even go into Detroit. I come here and I make all my meetings happen here. Like he comes and sits, he's in this room all day Wednesday. You know, he literally had six different meetings, like six different groups of people coming in. He's like, I like literally only want to come here when I, cause he's like, you guys had this room and it's comfortable. And he's like, even when I'm done, he's like, I go sit one of the sofas over there. He's like, I relax. He's like, you guys, the sofas are like one of the most comfortable, you know, in my opinion, in the state, you know, like for like just being able to sit there for three, four hours, five hours, Six hours would just not have like a backache, you know, my knees aren't cranking or, you know, nothing's really bothering me. So like, I just relax. He's like, I have a couple of meals throughout the day. You know, that's a big thing is like being comfortable. Like, Absolutely. Back to, like when we built the place, it was like, all right, how, how do we want our cigar lounge to be 100% like two that's hard where, That's how, yeah. what I was talking about earlier, what, what we, we were to, With this guy, we went to like literally 20 different stores <laughs> to find the sofas, you know, this yeah. guy's like, he said, no, nope, this is not it. It's like, yeah. no. it's like me and Mark. <laughs> you know, and he was like, nope, this is not it. You know, we go to another store. I'm thinking about, I'm sitting there, I'm, going, I'm like, fuck, where can I, we gotta find another store. Cause we went through all the stores in the area, you know, and we found the, the store and the actual salesman was like, hey, we got this really good, comfortable cop, you know, sofa over here, like one person sofa over here, come and try it out. We sat in and Donnie literally sat in like this. He's like, oh yeah, this is the one. And yeah, he, so when I sat down, I had Chris in my lap too, and I knew this was the chair. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You know, you, you said something that triggered when they were going through the concept and the theme here, right? Chris talked about someone driving two hours to work here. The room we're sitting in right now, you know, these rooms, you'll see executives come in, they'll have their meetings here, but both these 85 inch TVs are set up so that, you know, people can come in here and do a presentation. They're working on a button where you literally fog up the window and yeah, yeah. you can have privacy in here. So, but like, that's why this room is also created. It's not just like, hey, you know, let's have a separate room to smoke in, but they've got an area. He doesn't charge anyone for it, right? People come in here and they'll just set up shop and, they like thing. it because yeah. they're seen, but they're not bothered. Yeah. yeah, that's why they like it the most. Like they come in here and like even like the big shots will come in. They like coming in here because they're seen, but that's what nobody's coming in here and nobody's. They're maybe wave at them, but they keep on moving. You know what I mean? Well, and the sound too. You know, like as soon as you close the doors, uh, we can't hear the music outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's music playing. We got the fights on today, so there's a lot of noise that's going on out there. And you know, close the doors, we don't hear it. It's good for the podcast. Good yeah. if you're gonna have meetings, um, you know, presentations, whatever. Uh, yeah, it's fan it's a fantastic room. This is what I was hoping we did the podcast. I was talking to Francis about it yesterday. Yeah. Speaking, hey, of, speaking of the fight, who's going to win? Tyson Fury, man. Come on. Yeah, I was going to say. It's, Fury. it's funny don't because count, don't count, don't during, count out. during COVID, when we went to we went to – everything was shut down here. Restaurants and everything were shut down. So my brother-in-law was like, hey, why don't you guys go to our condo in Clearwater? So my wife and I went with the baby. Actually, there was no baby at the time. No, there was no baby during COVID. Oh, so – yeah. So you made the baby. It might have been a COVID baby. Water. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. the Olivia room was conceived in Clearwater. Just so, so you guys know. We went and had lunch at the in this I mean dinner in this hotel, right? And then we were leaving and we seen a I seen a glass room and it had a long these tables come together. They mainly are, are together always, but there was parties last night, they were separated. So there was a, a long window like this and a really long table and it had like wine shelves around there. And I was like, wow, this would be such a cool room one day for like, you know, to be part of like a restaurant concept. So then my brother and I, when we were like trying to design everything, we're like, it's a huge cigar bar, it seats 200 people. You know what I mean? So it's, it's double your average cigar bar size, yeah. you know, anywhere kind of, you know? So it was like, how can we break this room off a little bit where during the day it doesn't have to be used unless people want it. Then they can just sit out there and it's here more for looks, you know? So like it literally worked out perfect, perfect. So I do have a question for you guys. Um, I know you said you grew up in the restaurant industry, right? Yeah. So did your father have a restaurant? That my, my father and uncle opened up the, they were in the Coney Island business. Okay. So I actually, they were actually partners with his dad in a restaurant before they went on their own. And they were in the restaurant business since the seventies. So it's like, I was probably conceived in the restaurant to yeah. be honest with you. So <laughs> it's literally in my blood since I was a little kid. I want to hear that story. Hey, hey, table 10. Yeah. You know? Oh, <laughs> right i'm telling you so it, and it did it did so it's i feel like it was in our blood and it's like you know i'm married but i'm married to the restaurant business before i am to my wife you know what i mean that's like how it's always been you know what i mean it's like we're just like very dedicated and you know hard working like just like it's, it comes from my dad and like my uncle do you know what i mean like that's how like they were always this hard working people and like that's how we were molded literally the same way like nothing else mattered you got to work and yeah provide a living for your family and that's the only way you're gonna do it by working hard because nothing's gonna be given to anybody right yeah. you guys started the cigar brand and it's not gonna be given to you. you guys gotta have to work your ass off marketing and perfecting a cigar and yeah. 
and getting it out there. You know what I mean? Like traveling to Michigan and all that stuff. Like all those like little things, you know, those little wins will be hopefully a big win for you guys one day. You know what I mean? Yeah. God willing. Yeah. God willing. Yeah. So were you guys ever involved in that business or you guys just automatically went to bars and then uh no we we had like a we had a series of restaurants over time you know i always cook my brother always worked you know we're always worked in the restaurants yeah. you know so about nine years ago we sold our last coney island and we got to the like the, the scene shifted right like at least in michigan where like coney islands weren't like as profitable as they used to be right it was harder because labor is going up food's going up there's so many around everything and well. there's so many around so it's like we shifted to like the liquor side of things and then it's when we opened up our first bar in 2015 and we just had bars since yeah, we learned our relationship just from our dad and uncle alone because they were always those two were inseparable you know what i mean like they yeah. you know, there was nothing that could se separate them and that's like we learned from that example too because so many people would be like wow like you guys you guys work together sure. like you guys are brothers like you guys are actually together everywhere you go and you agree upon everything and like you guys are like one like when we see one we see both you know what i mean yeah and that's like a big thing too you know like you have you have to have that relationship because at the end of the day it's you're doing it for your family, you're not doing it for anything else. You know, I, I would say just kind of being, I would say almost like the big brother to them. Right? I grew up with them and, uh, what, seven years on you or so. But, you know, he talked about the brothers growing up together, right? And the brothers have a legacy, right? The name Zeph's, for example, Uncle Zeph, you know, the first place they had in Easter Market, Zeph's, right? Yeah. Um, every place you had until the bars were Zeph's, yeah. right? So it was like, honestly... But even two of the bars. The, the, yeah. the, 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 the both Zeph's. bars, and one of them is still there, Zeph's Dockside, right? So, um, you know, taking a business like this and really kind of diversifying, besides the, the Irish Tavern, that, I mean, the Irish pub that you guys have that um, is Hennessy's, but, you know, opening Don Cristos was... What's that? Oh, go ahead. So Don Cristos, for example... Mm -hmm. you think about it they you know what are you going to name it right they really wanted to kind of create but this is really their bro their father and uncle zef was a legacy throughout the years right and you yeah. think about it that that name that's carried on for since what the 1970s yeah, yeah. right so you got to think um we're in 2024 and now to in the 20s to bring out don cristos and then now this is the cigar room they've got the tacos and tequila as well but now this is their turn, right? It's their legacy and kind of, you know, taking it further. So Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, there does need to be a switch, you know, like like me and Mark, we kind of grew up in the same atmosphere. My dad and his two brothers started Giovanni's. Everyone knew us through Giovanni's, you know, or even our, we have 16 acres in Lake Mary. And if you look at the estate planning, it's called Giovanni's property, you know, so we've always had that name attached to us. Um, and they needed to retire. They've been working in that restaurant since they were 18, yeah. you know, so, and it, and it kills you, yeah. especially how, you know, I'm we're, sure we're, we're a community built on pride exactly in our family, right. And kind of Our keeping group, the family yeah. name there and you know what I mean? So I, I know what you're saying. Yeah. And, and they like, you know, they would be there 24 seven, you yeah. know, it's, if the doctor told them they had to stay home, they'd be like, fuck you. I'm going back to work. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, that's just how it was. So it, it killed them, especially during COVID, you yeah. know, no one wants to work. Everyone used, you know, oh, I got COVID just to get off work, and we had to cover always. But uh, uh, they ended up selling it out, and, you know, we're trying to build a legacy right now. Yeah, yeah. And I see this, uh, Palusha Food Group. So I'm guessing, you know, that's kind of the overall yeah. company for everything. Um, and how long has uh, Don Cristo's uh, Tequila and Tacos been open now? Two months. Two months, yeah. Yeah, a little over two months. Yeah. I'm sure there's growing pains. There always is. All yeah. yeah no but, they, but they left no stone unturned there either. So the same thing. You know, yeah. I mean, oh, I saw pictures right away. I'm like, I sent them. It's the opposite of this, right? So this is nice, dark. You know, yeah. That's chill. all white. That one's yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I sent them screenshots. I'm like, we gotta go. And I, I literally planned out, you know, these three days for everyone. And uh, I'm like, all right, we're gonna do the podcast over here. We're gonna go there, get lunch because I want to try the food. Then we're gonna come back here and have dinner because last time I was here, I had the fillet. Yeah. Literally, I only ate here at any anywhere else like Appreciate while that. i was up in michigan you know i'm like you know what? i'm like i'd rather not eat and just come eat here than you know go try somewhere else and i'm gonna be pissed off you know yeah yeah or, or even even go to like chipotle or something something i could get in florida like i'm not gonna do that yeah i don't blame you yeah, yeah. We appreciate it always. Oh yeah, it was it was delicious. Every night I was texting, I'm like, dude, you gotta try the steak, you gotta try this. I was pissing myself that I didn't try more things, but 
the first time I had the flu. We got a long like, time today. Don't worry. I know. I know. <laughs> be a long night. It will. It's okay. We're a big time night crowd. Like everybody comes around like eight nine o'clock at night because they know we're open until one o'clock in the morning. And we don't kick nobody out even at one o'clock in the morning. Like one o'clock comes, it's like all right. Like the night's like slowly starting to end. Let's start finishing. You know, like people still buy a cigar at twelve forty five and they'll sit here for the next half hour, forty five minutes. So I'm glad you pointed that out though because. I can tell you, we've been to cigar rooms or cigar lounges in the in the area, and like let's say they close at midnight. Yeah. Literally, you feel the pressure. They're looking at you. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I know you guys pride yourselves on don't put that pressure on anybody, but we've basically almost been kicked out right at midnight. Yeah, right. Yeah. We we multiple came, times. And we say literally these tabs are what you know these are easily three four hundred dollar tabs yeah, yeah. when you're going to these cigar lounges. We we went to Birmingham last night and it was dead. So I'm like, you know what? Let's go to Don Cristo's. We'll go show face. You know, I don't know if, I, like, I didn't know if you guys would still be here. Go no, ahead, go, ahead. go ahead. So I'm like, I didn't know if you guys would still be here, but I'm like, ah, oh, we'll just go anyway. So we came here last night. It was 12, 12, 15 by the time we came, you know, and they were smoking and we had drinks and come 107, you know, Jared wanted another drink. Lots of drinks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Jared wanted another drink. And it Gina, stopped. Gina was like. <laughs> All right, yeah, you know, she looked at this tab and was like, all right, I'll give you another one, don't worry. Yeah. You know, because they were still close enough and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This even happened the other night. It was like, we closed during the weekdays, like midnight, and there was a group of like 15 guys just hanging out, enjoying themselves. The weather was beautiful out. They were outside, you know, and uh, I walked into the dining room, all the lights were turned off, and like, what are you guys doing? Like, you know, it was like a, like a manager that wasn't used to like nighttime managing, you know, I'm like, turn all the lights right back down. Don't make feel anybody feel uncomfortable. I yeah. said, they sit here till 1.30 in the morning, guess what, so are you. You know, like you want them to be comfortable because yeah. guess what, they're gonna remember that and they're gonna come back and be like, hey, you know, so-and-so, they didn't kick us out at 12 o'clock when they closed, we stayed yeah. until one thirty hanging out. We know, remember, we were, and we they, remember, they, they, you remember those very yeah. specific uh, instances. We've been places, yeah. Yeah. Like, hey, like they'll give us our tab without us even asking for it. I'm like, wait a minute, what if I wanted another drink? You know, yeah. like, All right, so we're sitting here for like 3, 4 a.m. <laughs> A lot of times, don't you? No, by law, you have oh. to be out by two o'clock. But yeah, I uh, yeah. Say that. Come, a lot, coming a lot of, from the owners, all the employees are like, "I don't want to go home. I've been yeah. here all day." Well, here, and think if you lock the door, it's any close, so we can stay later, right? You guys want? <laughs> hey, man, you guys want to squeeze, squeeze it? Go ahead, squeeze it, man. <laughs> well, I will say, a lot of places, you know, that we live around, it's like that. If it closes at, you know. Yeah, 12 two. or whatever, it's 12. It closed at 2. Yeah, don't make by law, I got to tell it to you. Yeah, 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 don't make it leave. It's a place that, you know, close at, you know, let's just say weekends, they close at 2 a.m., right? They'll give us our check at like 12 or, I'm sorry. Like 1. Yeah, 12.45, 1 o'clock. Yeah. Right? And then they'll be like, oh, yeah, we did last call already. Wait, you're closing at 2, though. Yeah. They're like, yeah, we'll last call, and then we leave at 2. Like, you know, I'm like. That's like coming here. I was like, okay, it's almost 1. Is this like a hard stop at 1? But we felt it out. We were here past one, hanging yeah, yeah, out. Yeah. You know, wrapped it up as soon as we could. But yeah, you, don't, you ever want to feel the pressure to leave? Never. Because Never. then too, it's like, oh, we can't go here. We've got thirty minutes left. Exactly. You know, we're not gonna be able to fit it in. So. You'd be you'd be so surprised, like how many, like us closing at one o'clock on Friday and Saturdays, that how many people would come twelve fifteen, twelve thirty, and come and have two, three drinks and have a cigar. For that hour, because you know they know they could stay till one thirty, so they know they can make an hour out of it at night if they don't feel like going home right away. Because you know when you're enjoying your night, nobody wants to go home. Yeah. You want to keep the party going. You know what I mean? I didn't go home last night. You, I didn't go home last night. You seem like Frank the Tank, where you'd be streaking down the street <laughs> at two o'clock in the Always morning. Always goes on, but yes, Frank the Tank. <laughs> well, even Zach says like, well, maybe it's one because then they're <laughs> able to stay open till two, like unofficially. You know, so one o'clock we close. But you're welcome to stay yeah, until like, two, you know. I'm, I was driving, right? You know, it was the DD for the night. But I'm like, let's just go. Let's go see. You know, worst case scenario, I see them closing and we leave. You know, but yeah, no, there's no pressure whatsoever. No, no. You know, and, that, and that's how it should be. I mean, we would get people come in the restaurant. We close at eleven o'clock on weekends, right? We get people come in at you know ten or yeah ten fifty, right? And we'd be like, I'm like, see them. You know, the hostess would always be upset. You know, right? of course. You know, but I'm like, I'm like, see them. You're gonna be here anyway. You still got to count the register. You still got to do all your side work. You got to do all this. What does it matter if they're eating while you're closing? And then, you know, I send you home and I just wait for them to finish up and I, you know, clean the table myself. Yeah. yeah. So then it's always a short term. It's something long term. Like, the, like that customer coming back and always remembering that one time, hey, we sat hey. them and we didn't kick them out and none of that. That's pretty good. Though. Don't ask it. Don't ask it. Get this on camera. Is this on camera right now? <laughs> I'm even seeing, I'm like wondering if there's a paper clip. I'm like, it's curving, it's not falling. You gotta have a little it's got, curve. It's in got there. the hook. 
Oh, oh my God. God. You took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> Great minds think alike. That helps the smoke at the back of the throat. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm really glad you guys enjoyed, you know, the Maduro. I'm glad we're doing Delicious. a, a cut and light. I, I'm really, I'm really enjoying it, honestly. You know, I'm glad your customers, you know, are going to be able to meet us too. Absolutely. I think that's going to be really great. Yeah, we're going to throw in some uh, clips and stuff from tonight too. So by the time everyone's watching this, they'll be able to see more of the atmosphere. Of you know, the crowd that's here, some other clips and stuff yeah. like that. So it's going to be great. Tell, tell, tell us about this, uh, this uh, cigar guys, ultimate guide to cigar smoking. Yeah, so you guys can carry this in here and sell it if you'd like. Um, are there are there tips in here about how to hit the back of your throat like Chris likes? <laughs> that, that's in a, oh, that, buddy. That's in release two. I asked that one. Vol- volume two. When we release volume two, I'm going to put that in there. But yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I think he's the author. I'm according to the thing. So. <laughs> well, I'm I'm the author according to real life because I. <laughs> but we put together this. It's a small little book. Just basic tips on. You know, how to cut and light your cigar, how to select cigars, cigar lounge etiquette, stuff like that. Uh, for volume two, we'd like to get some more people in the industry involved, have different uh, contributions and perspectives of different people from either the cigar lounge side of the industry or from wholesale, from retail. So we're going to be like doing a little thank you for you know, cigars. Yeah, exactly. So just kind of a little, I mean, it promotes us, obviously, but of course, it shares some valuable information we also got uh some cigar recommendations and reviews in there um you're gonna have the bss cigar in here next time right chapter three other cigars <laughs> chapter three it's in there oh okay <laughs> so what's your what's your preferred cut do you do you notice a difference literally there? i was about to ask that question great oh question franklin seriously i swear to Come god on, man Straight cut. Straight We're cut. Straight cut, guys. Yeah, you straight cut. Yeah. I do like a skin fade. We're all straight. <laughs> why, why straight cut? Like We're all straight. <laughs> No, I, but I think that yeah. it's the most uh, it, you get the most smoke, the most draw output from straight cut. I'm a punch cut kind of guy. There you know. Oh, oh my god! Like oh, no. If there's like big fat cigars where I can't put my mouth around it, then I use a uh, whole punch. <laughs> so I will say, if you get a Lancero, sometimes like a punch cut's good because you don't risk cutting the the cap off or anything like that. Yeah. Um, or a bigger cigar, you can kind of like put a few punch holes in there. And get a good draw out of it, so I'm not opposed to it. But straight cut, all I think, all our cutters are straight cuts. It's just kind of like the traditional, I, yeah. I would say. Yeah, I saw. Yeah, I like straight cuts just because it's the easiest. You know, yeah, you can do it with a knife. You can do it. You know, we have a bunch of straight cut scissors, everything. Um, I do like that cut. So what do you what you call that? The diamond cut. So yeah, the diamond cut. Yeah. So yeah. the double the V. Yeah, yeah we double V. Yeah. So we call it a crown cut too yeah. in Florida. That's like a common thing. But I always feel bad asking people for it, just because like they like look at you like you're pretentious. Yeah. yeah. No, no they, my workers became used to it here because we have yeah, a lot of customers that ask. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, we have a lot of customers that ask for the diamond cut now. You know what I mean? Like they getting more drawn to it because I did it for one customer one time. And that, that's the only way he'll get it now. You know what I mean? He enjoys it. Like you yeah. just you're kind of drawing from every angle of the cigar, which is obviously kind of like a straight cut, but. I guess it's just the fancy way you're doing it. Yeah. yeah. I think it does depend on the cigar too. Each cut kind of has its purpose. Even yeah. the V cut. Sometimes if you have a, a cigar that might be rolled a little tighter, a V cut's good because it helps get more depth in there, so you can get a better draw. Yeah, well, yeah. One, one thing like I like that over a straight cut is you don't get the moisture from your mouth. That's so, true. Uh, or like the pieces of the tobacco. Yeah, the pieces. Yeah. yeah. So it's like it kind of protects, you know, your draw uh, on the cigar. So it, it definitely is a good. Yeah. Cut. Punch cut. Yeah, I kind of have a vendetta against them. <laughs> For no reason at all, you know. It's the same reason I hate flavored cigars. Just you know, it shouldn't exist. But <laughs> yeah. I agree. Well, flavored cigar to me is like a cigarette. Why smoke it? You know, and plus the sweetness is just too much. Palette, like the menthol. A lot of there, there are some the decent. Menthol, there are the some de- like I, I'm not a flavor guy at all. But if I do, like uh, you know, like the uh, fat bottom. Betty's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I will Those say, like, are yeah. Compared good. to acid, I feel like it's just no, overpowering. Cannot, no, cannot. acid is. Yeah, no. I will admit, Mark, Mark, accidentally played a trick on me. He took a band off of one of the acid cigars, and I thought it was something <laughs> different. I put it to my mouth, and I was like, "Holy cow! It literally tastes like it's coated in yes, like their vanilla or whatever. Is coated it is, yeah. Like, but b- believe it or not, like our distributors tell us that acid is the number one selling cigar in the no, world, it still is. which yeah, it is, is so crazy yeah. to me. Yeah. Someone brought me one of the boat one time, and I looked through it. I couldn't. I, mean, I think the, I, the reason yeah. there's a reason for it. Because Mark, <laughs> you did the same thing. I, I couldn't. Mark, Mark was at a wedding, right? It was a wedding. Oh, yeah. 
when you drew a state acid one. or whatever. It was an no, acid. No, no, no. Justin came back from there. Oh, so my cousin came. No, 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 no not that. When he, remember, he threw out. The he went to cigar. a wedding. Wait, what? He started smoking a flavored cigar and then he threw it out. He's like, oh, I just accidentally lit a flavored like a cigar or something. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Drew Estate ones? Yeah. Not the acids, but yeah. Yeah, it's Drew Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Mark was at a wedding and uh, someone gave him a cigar. Yeah. Right? So everyone started smoking it. So. He like he cuts it, starts to light it, and he immediately realizes it's a flavored cigar. Like, what but what was it? One like a fat bottom or one of those? Uh, <laughs> it was it was a Drew Estate something, right? Uh, the cigar Rose? International series. There was like a yeah, Cigar International had their own like flavored yeah. cigar kind well, of. Well, I know Drew Estate also has the the you know Leather the Rose. Uh, yeah, Leather yeah. Rose and some of these other ones. Yeah. But anyway, like the one thing I noticed about them, what I do like about it, is in the beginning the the, the flavor is a little bit intense, but honestly, after like your first three. Puffs of the yeah. cigar, it's more it goes away. And it's just a nice, you know, like I said, it's something good in the morning, like a dip of coffee, something simple. But a lot of people also that don't smoke cigars on the regular, they shoot for the flavored cigar because they're like, oh, all the tobacco flavor is too powerful. I've noticed like, that. Like, That's why it's the number one selling cigar. cigar. Yeah, yeah. almost. almost I've noticed yeah, that with a lot of people who don't know how to smoke in the humidor mm-hmm. yeah. here. You guys see it every day. I'm not yeah. here every day, so they always what? Do you have something with a little flavor? Do you have flavor cigar? I don't like. I'll start going to like this, or like you know, a little hazel. They're like, oh no, I want that that vanilla. Yeah. I want that, you know. They want that so, sweet it, flavor. Yeah. yeah. So in all fairness, I feel like a lot of people start somewhere and they kind of gravitate. Yeah. That's what it mature. is. They move. They, they move. Mature. You know. Yeah. I feel like a lot of a lot of people that don't know about cigars, they always heard about Monte Cristo, right? Yeah. And they always like, oh, where's the Monte Cristos at? You know, I don't smoke cigars, but I always heard of Monte Cristo. And then like they start there, and then once they keep smoking, they kind of changed in a different direction where somebody would lead them, and they always go from there because we get. 95% of our customers come here that don't even know what they're smoking. They just want to see something that looks cool or something that looks nice and big or something that's flavored. And it's like, it's it's funny because then they, they grow and change their pal and they actually start learning about cigars. You know what I mean? It's crazy. We've got a little cousin in here. First cigar he's ever smoked was a Padron. So you get what? Ultra full body. <laughs> Sounds started, like me. He started coughing. Yeah. Right. Remember the story? And, yeah. uh, you know, but now it's crazy because he's in here almost every day. And he's, what, 20, 20, 26, two, years, yeah. 26 years old? Yeah, now. yeah. So it's interesting. He started at, what, at $25 a stick, essentially. Yeah, I think yeah, it happens. Well, $25, $30 a stick. Yeah. He bought it because I remember where he was when he smoked it the first Alex time. started uh, his first cigar was a Padron. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it was a Padron Maduro. Did you choke, and I enjoyed did you it. Did on it, too? I didn't, know. Okay, just I, making sure. You know, <laughs> I did my research before. Well, he did it. But he, he so, was just—he yeah. just went in. It's like, what's what's a good stick? And the guy's like, "Oh, take a Padron." So he didn't know. Guy yeah. knew. That's, that's, what that's, to that's me. the best thing when you're when you're a cigar business. I was today. smart though. Give I a good got stick, fifty dollars. I got a smaller go. one because I was like, okay, if I don't if I don't like it, then you know I don't want to waste it. But I did enjoy it. I finished it and I was good. But I stuck with Padron for a bit. Then I tried Davidoff, which is a completely different spectrum. Yeah, yeah. big time, yeah, big time. And then um, eventually got into the more lesser known brands and was like okay i could spend half the money and, get and still better, enjoy yeah, yeah, yeah just cigars, as much yeah. so i haven't been smoking as long as they have but when i first met them i was always smoking a Padron 926 like that's it, that's two three smoking. times a day you know they made funny for it but expanded my palate yeah you're welcome still my favorite cigar <laughs> honestly like again depending on what someone does for a profession if, if you've got money and money's not an object then smoke your life away right go ahead and smoke and, and pay 25 50 a stick i don't care but like when you smoke multiple sticks a day, and you're if you're into it that much, you start to realize okay, Dominican versus you know Nicaraguan cigars, and now they're starting to expand in Honduras and these other areas. But like, dude, I think someone's crazy if they're spending that kind of money and they really don't know what they're doing, and they're smoking four or five sticks a day, and they're paying twenty five, thirty dollars a stick. Yeah, somebody drinking with a glass of whiskey that they don't know what they're drinking. You know what I mean? Like they might get like a hundred dollar <laughs> shot and not realize what it is sometimes. You know what I mean? It's just. They're not enjoying. They're just slamming it back. Double Macallan cars. 18. Slow down Neat. and actually like Double embrace Macallan the flavor. Because whiskey is kind of like very comparable to cigars. You know, like you gotta like embrace the flavors. Like let it sit in your mouth for a few seconds. Like yeah. actually like enjoy it in order. Let to it what? <laughs> I was waiting. I was, pause. I was pause. Right at it, I was pause, waiting for it. Pause. <laughs> Who added that one out two seconds ago? <laughs> oh, we're keeping that in. That's gonna be a short. <laughs> there you go. Oh my god. Now you're right though. I mean, like my uncle. It's a pretty funny story. Everyone in Lake, Lake Mary is a small town, right? So that's where we live. And uh, everyone in Lake Mary knows the story. My uncle goes to <laughs> Corona Cigars, right? And they have a huge whiskey selection. So he's looking up and he sees a bottle of Macallan 30. 
just on the, on the highest shelf, you know, and he's like, I want that. And the, you know, the bartender's like, oh, okay, you know, double or single? It's like a double. So, he, okay, cool, no problem. On the rocks. On the rocks, yeah. So he gets on the rocks, and, you know, they're like, are you sure you want on the rocks? Because, you know, once you get to that high, they, some people just want to drink it neat. They'll yeah. put a drop or two of water in it, you know. Uh, but he's like, no, no, yeah, put like a big ice cube in there. Okay, cool. So he gets it and he's like drinking it and he gets his tab and his tab was like seven hundred dollars and he's like, cause I mean they charge what uh, three fifty? Yeah, it was like six seven hundred dollars. Yeah, so did did he get a happy ending with that? No, <laughs> wow, he thought he was. Sucks. So yeah, he thought he, he definitely thought. I mean, you know, with the bartender that served it, it would have been a great. You know, anyway, so, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but uh, but what, yeah, so, what, what was his name again? <laughs> <laughs> it's one thing you have to oh my god! Stay I know, but uh, so anyway, so he gets his check, and thank God, like we were close with the manager at the time. Uh, I mean, we're still close with him, but he's at the Sarasota location now. And he ends up giving it to him at cost, which was still like five hundred bucks. Five hundred bucks, yeah. So to this day, he's like, I'm still paying that off, you know, like, my credit card <laughs> debt, like this and that. I'm like, Oh, you're fine. He's like, He's like, No, man, that cursed me. So the next McCown event that they had, we bought a McCown 12 bottle, and we had they had an engraver over there. You can engrave whatever you want. So of course we got one with Albane Eagle, you know. And then the second bottle we got, we put McCown 30 year on it, and we gave it to him. <laughs> We're like, here's a McCown 30 that you can actually afford. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. But yeah, he's he's the kind of person he doesn't drink whiskey, right? So he didn't enjoy it, you know, because he doesn't yeah. know like what flavors yeah. he likes or whatever. Uh, we drink whiskey all the time, so if, I, if someone gave him a count thirty, you know, I'd probably say it's not worth the price. But uh, but I would drink that for like twelve hours, like that yeah. same glass. So, so what, do you, what is your preferred cool. match when you're smoking when you're smoking cigars? What do you drink? Oh man, uh, Belvini fourteen, uh, McCown twelve, Marker Grays, McCown eighteen. I would say that uh, Zach and I too our go to one of our go tos is Basil Hayden. Yeah, especially Basil Hayden toast. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, for bourbon. Yeah, yeah. Have you guys into fusion yet or no? I'm sorry, not the fusion, Bardstown. but Bardstown. But it's, the fusion is one color. of the lines. They're very, okay. It's a very good sipper. Like, and they have probably, like, now especially, they probably have, like, a line of, like, probably 14 different whiskeys. Yeah, we'll have to try. Oh, we, we've, been, we've, we've, been, we've, been, we've been drinking it for a while, even before, like, you know, like, we went to the Card Cigar event here in Detroit. Yeah. They had a booth set up and everything with all their lines. We, we recognized the brand immediately, right? But they're a newer brand. They put the recipe on the side of the bottle so you know everything that's in it, right? But yeah. it's, it's, it's a fairly... Fairly uh, good, I'd say. We, I'd say it's great, right? I, Their I love it. Flavoring notes are phenomenal in the whiskeys. Like they have, like you taste everything that you think you're tasting, yeah. you know, which is nice. And it's a good quality. I mean, they have some bottles that range up to, you know, some bottles that cost price are like two, three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars. They have your sixty, seventy dollar bottles, you know. So it's, it's nice. Should we uh, sip on it now or? <laughs> yeah, okay. why not? You want it, yeah. Pour a couple. No, no, I'm just, uh, no, 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 don't leave, don't leave. Try it. It's a little simper. Yeah. Just, oh, just, oh, oh, just, oh, I thought you meant just, okay. just to see the real We're going to be here hey, all day. We're gonna be all day. <laughs> hey, all I'm going to say is we're going to have to uh, contact Barstown to make sure we're getting paid for a nice advertisement there. That's it. <laughs> I agree. I have, a, I have a question. So when people dip their cigars, like their cigars dipped in wine, what is that all about exactly? So, so, I, I hear, I hear like different that. things. Sorry. You go through, yeah. All right. So We did a whole thing on this. It, definitely, it's not as popular anymore, but back in the day when cigars weren't as good, People would dip them in a whiskey or a, a cognac mostly to give it a little better of a flavor. Yeah, and that was, from the yeah, that Arnold, was Arnold Schwarzenegger used to use tequila. So he would do tequila and he would brush it on. Yeah. And we actually did a video trying it. Yeah. So we did that for experiment. Don't recommend. You know, that's not for us. Was it that bad? It, it, it wasn't bad, but you know, you gotta let it like dry. Um, otherwise, it. Well, I, even when we let it dry, Confusion. it burns. It's not worth it. it, especially like with cigars now. So I mean, this is actually the bottle, but she's bringing oh, wow. uh, a couple of right now. Okay. But so, that's not the Fusion series, right? No. That's okay. Discovery number 11. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The new, newer one. Okay. But yeah, so, I mean, there's tons of cigars now that are great, great flavor, everything like that. So it, you're basically, at this point, ruining the cigar by either dipping it or yeah. adding, brushing the cigar. Because what was it? Arnold Schwarzenegger does that. Yeah, yeah, yeah we were just talking, talking about, about that. But was it last winter a guy asked to uh, dip it in wine or something? In I wine? Know, I remember. Mm. In wine, really? Mm. So I never heard that. What no. some people do, which I kind of want to try still, is um, take a cedar box like this, for example, and like brush the wine inside, and then you let the cigars age in that box. Oh, so they like kind of absorb that flavor 
Yeah. So you're not necessarily dipping it or brushing it on, but it'll absorb those wine flavors. We did that with, um, with some whiskey and tequila, actually. And it, it's a subtle change, so it's, mm-hmm. it's nothing to you know, write home about, but it's kind of a cool experiment. See how it breaks it down. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, that's pretty cool. I've never seen that yeah. before. And that, that sticks out with anyone that's... It's I, like the base. I'm newer to bourbon the last two years. You know, I was always a tequila guy as well. So yeah. for, you know, for a long time with smoking cigars, I'd always smoke and drink tequila at the same time, right? Yeah. And uh, I've... Again, in the last couple of years, started getting into bourbons. Yeah. So, so have you ever had like tequila old fashions and stuff? Yeah, yeah. So mm. we, there, we have a place, uh, Cellar City Cigars. Uh, they have the base of cigar over there, and they make killer old fashions. Like they do, you know, small barrel aged. Uh, We're better than these old fashions, right? No, never. Okay, uh, just want to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I heard camera, you say killer. I just want to hear you say killer I'll, old fashions. Off the camera, Don, I'll tell you that they are. No, sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, it's very unique because those flavors that you get from aging it in a small fall. barrel are really neat. You're blowing on it everything. Because you want me to. He wants, he, loved, he wants to say Ashton. Hey, yo. He wants to say I Ashton know. He, he's been looking time. at this the whole time. He's like We're just trying to see how legit this base of cigar really is here. You know, can we start just go, with go, go to our Instagram and look at the pictures. Come here. Go ahead. <clears throat> Yeah, oh, no, yeah. No. go on our Instagram to look at your pictures that you sent us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting for my box. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Pretty sure I saw Donnie like 10 cigars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll take care of that. We got a few. All right. So now we're going to we're gonna, uh, take care of these things, fine. huh? Yeah. Let's do it. So this is what we're trying. The Bardstown. This is the Series 11. Yeah. I like the bottle shape, too. It's mm-hmm. very unique, you know? All the bottles are the exact same, but the labels all look very different. Okay, you know, yeah. They make them very different. Thank you very so much. You know what, you're, what you're getting. Yeah, I like it. Even the back, they got a little design on here too. I don't yeah. know if you can see that, oh, but yeah. you've been you've been in the cigar business now for how long? A couple months. What have What have you learned? Why don't you share with the fellas here? See your camera. Oh boy. Can, can 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 you see? Her? You can You can take on Donnie's mic right there, and uh, yeah, kick this guy out. <laughs> <laughs> just, just someone again. We were talking about newbies, and you know, you've been in this business. You've had your chance to make some cool TikTok videos, puffing on cigars. Yeah. What do you What do you What are you thinking about the cigar business? Being a young female. In this uh, industry, you enjoying it? I am enjoying it. I think it's a lot of fun. It's very unique. It's different. What's one of the most uh, unique things you've learned about cigars so far? Um, or what stands out to you in general about being in this in this business and cigars in general? Like, what's what's what do you see? Uh, you seen a lot of this I sell. Yeah, a lot. Okay. I sell okay. a lot of those. It's one of the ones I recommend actually a lot of the time. Okay. I got a chance to try it myself. And really That's why you're the best. Yeah. We didn't pay her to so, say that, by the way, guys. No, not at all. <laughs> I actually, I actually tried one the other day for the first time, and it was really good. Yeah. Awesome. So I've been, I've been selling a lot of them. It's, one it's of like twenty five percent Albanian. I think that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, she just found out that you know she's had some Albanian in her DNA as well. So we were talking about that this morning. Okay. That's what uh, uh, his fiance. She just did. She's Italian, and uh, she just did a DNA test. And same thing. She found like Eastern European and Albanian in there. So yeah. it's very cool. they're everywhere. Hey, you know, can't get rid of, can't get rid they of are, us. They are they are. You, you go to Argentina, you know, after World War Two, a lot of uh, yeah, please. a lot of them went down Thank to you. Argentina and some of those uh, South American countries. You've got yeah. them all over. I can't the get rid of them. It's crazy. Yeah. I always try to get away from these Albanians. What's your but... So my dad's from Venezuela. Okay. And my mom is from. They're in Venezuela too, so you really might. Oh have no, yeah, 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 it's for sure. And then my mom's from Europe, not Eastern Europe exactly, but kind of like. Germany and you're there. Okay. So I mean, who knows? And what's your last name? Gonzalez. Gonzalez I. Gonzalez. 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 Yeah, they they, they changed you know, it. You know, George Washington was Albanian. You know that. <laughs> so was Mother Teresa. Mary Mary ba- no, Mother no, no, Teresa no, no, was no. actually Albanian. Have you ever seen Have you ever seen the rumor online or no? <laughs> Google it. Mary Bala, his mother, George Washington's mother. Google it right now. Oh my God! The cherry tree was also from Albania. And you guys, okay. your, my okay. Okay. There. Okay. And you guys okay. said Donald Trump was Albanian too. Right. No, back. he's not. But Donald Trump, I don't know if you knew this. So his uh, security detail before he had Secret Service, he would only hire Albanians. Really? Yeah, because like they were loyal people. He watched Taken. He was like, because because they know Pesa. <laughs> yeah, hey, that's it. No, no, seriously. Hi, there you go. Read this for me, please. Read it for for the group here. That's George. George. <laughs> 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 George Washington. <laughs> no, no, listen, listen. No, he's, he's, gonna, he's gonna read it. Google George, it. George Washington was of Albanian descent. His mother, known as Mary, uh, Mary Ball, uh, Maria Bala, 
an Albanian, was the daughter of a first-generation Albanian parents from uh, Beja, Kosovo. Yeah. Yeah. And aren't you guys also from Kosovo? Yeah. From there you go. I was going to say, too. My dad's from Clean. I think my, mom, my mom's from Jakov, too. Oh, yeah, there you go. I think we've talked oh, about shit. this before, but Alexander the Great, before Albanian was even a thing, he was yeah. from that same region. So, of course, Alexander the Great, technically, is also Albanian. All right, well, I, I heard The Rock is 15% Albanian. Too. <laughs> and John Cena, the wrestler. Is it really John Cena? <laughs> <And> John Cena. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, let's do it. You know, to uh, Heritage. Cheers. Yeah, Cheers. Cigars. I can't believe I'm day drinking. Oh. Cheers. Chris, Venezuela, Venezuelan <laughs> Albanians. How is it? No, 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 no. Hold on. We're not all going to drink, day drink, and you're just going to sit there and look pretty. Uh-huh. Yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. Get wow. one. Quit playing, Chris. Do you Mr. Mr. Cappuccino one? over there. I, I was pulling the fast one. <laughs> yeah. Nah, not that fast, buddy. Hold on. Hold on. We, 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 won't, we won't drink before the, the man Absolutely drinks not. over here. Come on. I'm going to take you a can, You can take a sip. Smell it's it up. Very, it smells like caramel. Very, very good notes of caramel. What notes are you getting? Some caramel. <laughs> Any nutty notes? Just hmm. like nuts in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> No comment then. <laughs> he agrees. Why do you think hazelnut? You know, there's a reason. Everything's got a reason. <laughs> Cheers again, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers. 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 The base up. Two base up. Oh, you did opposite of what I said to do, dude. You slammed it. I don't know why. <laughs> instinct. Instinct took over. He's got some spice to it. He's got a long day. He's got a day shift. He's like, nice. let me it's get smooth, a though. Well, the cigar, smooth. they're beautiful. Honestly. Very smooth. Very smooth. Very like you get different notes when you're smoking a cigar with it, which is so nice. Yeah, yeah. The state rep comes in here all the time. Like, you know, like I, he shows a lot of love and support. And he's always in here smoking a cigar. And, like, he'll be smoking a cigar and sipping it slowly. And Do you ever recommend like, the base? There it goes. I was going to say. Oh, you finally right. dropped it? Nice. And the ashtray. Good. Good looks. I knew it was coming. That's why I kept, you know. That's a good, like, six-inch ash on there. <laughs> say, say, say something. No. I'm, I'm looking at I'm going to stay out of this one. <laughs> this, this won't make the cut if I say what I want to say. You, you, guys, you guys our, have been good, actually. You guys yeah, have been very yeah. tame. You should have seen our episode 69. That episode is a mess. Damn it. I wish I was there. <laughs> oh, man. So the episode was about weird names for cigars because there's a bunch of cigars, especially at Toro Fuente. Like the sophisticated hooker, or uh, what is it? Like pussy juice. Yeah, pussy juice. <laughs> I haven't so seen that one yet. What? Yeah, yeah, it's all. Cigar name? Yeah, yeah. Swear to God. Wow. Swear to God. Episode sixty nine of the Cigar Guys. We highlight all the weirdest cigar well, I guess names that's we could an find. Appropriate cigar name for episode sixty nine. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's why we did it. You know, it's probably a combo. It's called uh, just a tip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or the swollen cock. <laughs> well, I'm sure you did. <laughs> Mark that, gets it all the time. Put, apparently. You put that one in the <laughs> no, he did. <laughs> the man behind the scenes. Are you on camera, by the way? Nah. Why, what the, why the fuck aren't you on camera, man? What about three? Mark volunteered to sit out, I guess. Do you want to switch? There he is. on camera now. <laughs> we usually have two cameras, so this is an upgrade. If you guys, well, you guys are, if you guys, very quiet talking about swollen cocks, I don't know what, what it is about. No, you. we're just getting started. I never, I never <laughs> if you guys ever one, want so. to do like like a collaboration when you guys are in Florida, and we do something here, like in Michigan, to connect to somehow, like oh, we do video, you know, we do that all the time, yeah, yeah. Okay, like on Skype, something like that, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, now we moved to Zoom, so you know, <laughs> it's not even Zoom; it's like knockoff Zoom. It's like Zoom from Wish. Okay, <laughs> so is there just just do two split screens? Basically, yeah. So we'll still switch back and forth. So you'll have your own camera, you know, like kind of showing you, and then it'll switch. You can smoke in your family room with your Call of Duty headphones on and everything. With no shirt, with no we shirt did, on. <laughs> we did an episode with um, Oliver from United Cigars. So he's just in his room at the house smoking, you know. So uh, it shows his screen, and then it goes back to our screen. We've done we've done a few of those, probably like five or six. Um, yeah, I'm down. Yeah, my my ADD is kicking in right now, you and guys I'm thinking about with, like other like cigar companies in itself. So like for the episodes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like even, like even cigar wives, like you know. Not yet. Yeah. Yeah. Not say cigar wives. cigar wives. Yeah. No man. Because there's another we got one like, in every new, state that we're in. So newcomer, <laughs> like Albanian cigar owner, that's like trying to get. He just started like what about a year ago? Year Who? and a half ago. For your Tony. Oh yeah, he's in. He's in New York. He's uh he's got to do a cigar brand. Yeah, yeah. You know, so he's out there like kind of like. Honestly, around like the same time as you guys, pretty much. Also, like trying to get this name out there, and yeah, we were first. So I just yeah, yeah, yeah. 
No, I mean, no, there's, it, there's like five company, five all Alban- There's five. Well, yeah, I it's think funny. We've we talked about this so before. Far. We're like, there's no cigar. So, uh, there's no Albanian cigar company out there. Yeah. And we started it, and then like about half a year in, we're like, well, there's this yeah. one, there's you this guys one. Ruined it for us. We were talking about doing it, and you're yeah. like, oh, there's like five. Oh, I can't forget it. Was it Fusha? Fusha. Yeah. Fusha yeah. was yeah, too. technically yeah, so first. So Fusha was the first one. Yeah. No, 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 no. I think there was another guy actually before that. Who's the family in Macedonia that are big in in the mobile business, they're public. They just went in, uh, God, what's the name of the company? I think one's like an actor in Europe. Probably they're they're like a billionaire family. They they actually came up with a brand in New York. I'll find the name and I'll send it to you later, but they're not producing. Cause I've had people come here and ask me if they have them. I'm like, never even heard of it. Yeah. Some Albanians that come here, right? So not producing and not producing enough. Well, I don't think they're making it anymore. I'll oh, look okay. it up. Cause when I look up the website, that's they weren't rare. there anymore. Okay. But yeah, so that's like the fifth company that- They, they had our worst case scenario. We said- well, That's weed they got, not cigars. You know, <laughs> well, like when we saw it, we're like, listen, worst case scenario, we get these cigars. We got a bunch of cigars to smoke for ourselves, you know? Yeah. But yeah, it's never going to be the worst case. Failed, we still smoke them. Absolutely. But failure is not an option, Zach. No, true. it's not. True. No, it's not. No, but, but yeah, like Fusha, like when we started, Fusha was like the only one that we were kind of like, yeah. like, oh shit, well, how did we miss them? You know, because... We yeah, we didn't know going into it, but then we found out. Yeah, then we found out. I uh, happened to come across them, and uh, actually, a customer mes- me- mentioned that they were in New York and smoked a Fusha. I'm like, yeah. what is that? And then I looked them up as well. That's funny, kind of like how you guys. Yeah. Like, I looked them up, and then I messaged them, and then, you know, got a hold of somebody and talked to the owner there. They do a good job, too, with their cigars as well. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if you guys had a chance to smoke them or not. Yeah. I smoked it once. Okay. Yeah. So he, um, he does a good job. They're based on Nicaragua. But they do a good yeah. job, and there's also these Albanians in Rhode Island. They're called Lyrians. Yeah. yeah. The Lyrian Cigar Company or whatever it is. So yeah, yeah. they do a really good job with their packaging. Yeah, but. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, Zach. <laughs> no, their boxes are, are amazing. I mean, yeah. you guys showed me the boxes. Yeah. You know, but, but yeah, Duo makes an actual good stick. They do. Um, and that, that's what I smoked actually last time I was here because, you know, I smoke bases all the I'm time. I'm going to try one yeah. so I gotta uh, try the after our event, you know. Yeah. 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 Got to Honestly, I think it'd be sweet to have like a podcast like with all like for example, I'm sure there's not that many out there and I'm sure you can get a, a collab to where you guys face uh I mean obviously face, I'm sorry, Usha and like you know, like the duo guys like you guys like a podcast together, like being an Albanian in the cigar industry. Yeah. I think that'd be pretty cool podcast. I think we, have I think we should do it too. at Don Crystals. Uh, even better. We have talked about that and we actually did have um I forgot to bring the cards. It's this guy made playing cards. Oh, so I was with talking about yeah, on yeah. it, yeah. So we had him on the podcast, and I'll bring him back to the event tonight. But he's got a beautiful design with scanner bag on it, and he's got like the blue and the red different colors. So uh, he has beautiful, a red, you know, for Albania, and then he has a blue for Kosovo. So <coughs> I ended up buying, I think, like five hundred dollars worth of playing cards from him. Just because wow. you know it's a small business. He was on Kickstarter, and you know it's a good thing to hand out during Christmas. I can hand it out to my family, and they yeah. love it. Uh, and uh, yeah, he, so he messaged us, and he's like, he's like, I'd love to do like a collab, and you know, help you guys design your boxes and stuff. And I'm like, that's exactly what we need, you know, because I mean, we wanted to do a simple box initially, right? Yeah. You know, we wanted it to be like a it's traditional it. cigar, which sometimes less is more. Exactly. Do you know what I'm Honestly, saying? Like, I mean, when I look at this, when I think about authentic, yeah, they're all simple boxes with their yeah. name across, yeah. and that's it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know. But we want to branch into the uh, the market of you know five packs, right? We want yeah. to have you know con- uh, actual boxes for our five packs or our variety packs and stuff like that, um, just so it's you know something you can keep, right? Just like uh, iPhone boxes. When you buy an iPhone, how many iPhone boxes do you have at your house? Probably a lot. You know, I, I know I kept all mine just because I built a fort yeah, for my kids. Pro- I believe that. <laughs> No, but they look so nice that you don't want to throw it away. Yeah. You know, and, and then that's kind of what gets your, your brand out there. That's kind of what, you know, gets people to recognize you. Uh, but, yeah, he, that, uh, he, does a, he does a really good job on those playing cards. Prime Shuffle. Prime Shuffle, that's what it's called, yeah. Bottom. I think you need to do an episode oh, yeah. teaching these guys how to retro. It'd be pretty fun just to watch them for like 60 yeah, minutes trying to figure it out. We should do an episode dedicated to that, yeah. We'll the teach uh, we'll teach Donnie here at the Retro Hill. Which one? Oh, either. Either. Oh, you, oh, you're gonna do why don't, why, don't, why don't we try actually? Let's, right actually, right let's now. see. Yeah. Real quick. <laughs> why oh yeah, let's, let's, let's do, right do it. Yeah. Let's do it, baby. Yeah. I'll explain it to you. How Maduro, someone explain it to me. I love this one. It just tastes you know the Habano. You know what? It's hazelnut, creamy, nutty. Going from Maduro to the Habano, and I would say that it's refreshing. 
prefer the prefer the uh, Maduro. No, I mean just off my first. I mean, I've spoken before. That's good though. You know yeah. why? Because you smoke a lot. Yeah. You know you like fuller body cigars, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm glad that you know that happened. Yeah. Because well, I was. I think I was talking about this earlier. Um, a lot of people that smoke a lot of cigars, they prefer the Maduro version because it's more full body. Yeah. It's more their speed. And then the Habano is great <laughs> for people that maybe don't smoke yeah. as often or they just prefer a milder cigar. Yeah, the Habano is great for people who don't know anything about cigars. You know, Pause. Like don't I, say that. But no. <laughs> I still love the Habano. Right, we were Chris, talking about the 50-50 thing. It's hard. Let's try the, let's try the retro. I mean, I think you're going to be able to get it down. So pretty much you got to put it in your mouth yeah. on the back of your tongue and, deep throat, right and in the suck. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. God. That's what happens. That's pretty much what you're telling them to fucking do. <laughs> I could give you a, a better explanation if you'd like. Go for yeah, it. Yeah, go, go ahead. Go okay. for it. Because I, I, I haven't been able to. Uh, he's so, can Ben? He's like, show me. He's like, just go like this. Uh, he's yeah, like, just do it. Like, go like this. Just do it. Your body like <laughs> <laughs> just do it. I don't get why you can't do it. <laughs> so someone. Just put it in your mouth and just exhale through your nose. I don't see the. Like, you see, it's here in the back of my, my tongue. You, now you just got to swallow it and then let it come out. I'm going to hit your tongue on your, the roof of your mouth like 10. He's like, wait. So try this. This is what clicked it for me. Try and let let like half of the smoke out first, and then the remainder swallow it. Try and like Don't swallow, swallow the smoke. No, not inhale. It's different. Swallow the smoke. See what happens. Let it go in your belly. No, not like that. No, like, like it'll naturally like, come like, out. Like this. Like if you're gonna swallow spit. You just did it, I think. Huh? Yeah, you just did it. Yeah. Wow. See, there you now, go. Hold on. That's the teacher right okay, there. Okay. So so hold on though. So the important <laughs> thing See, is. Now it just tasted something completely different. There you store. go. Really? There you go. Yeah. It there like it is. Just, I just told. There it is. There it is. All right, let me try it. <laughs> zoom you, zoom in. You just told me doing this completely different than how you saw. <laughs> zoom all like the way. This in. is literally how you're Mark, doing it. Zoom all the way. Mr. In. Gonzalez, do this again. All right. So let half Put of the mouth, smoke out of your mouth. Really well. What the tip? And then swallow oh. the rest. There you go. Yeah, there you go. You had to I saw it. Did you just do it. You did. It, it. Came out my mouth. Are you sure? Close your mouth. It's hard. That's what she said. I was gonna. I had a few jokes. Oh yeah, you just did it. Did I just do it? You just did it. Oh my god, yeah. you just did it. Take a bigger puff, guys. I just did it. <laughs> Take a bigger puff. Take a bigger puff. Try it. Yeah, yeah. Get it really wet. Lather it up good. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. There you go. You did it. But don't do you it so it. fast. Let it go out slow. Then you'll see. I just didn't get... want to swallow it. That's what I'm used to. Spitters <laughs> 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 quitters. Oh, oh, my God. No quitter. <laughs> oh my God! Never quit. Hey, How did this turn so gay? <laughs> Bunch of foreigners smoking cigars, drinking bourbon, talking about long Swallow. hard swallowing. swallowing. It reminds me of uh, Kevin Hart on the uh, Tom Brady roast. He's like, "Oh, you white guys! All you guys keep talking about is uh, dicks." You know, you can edit that part. Of it. Too much work. It's staying in. Yeah, look at that. There you got it. Yeah, literally. Yeah, you're a real cigar see, smoker you, now. You know what, said? I told you the same no, thing. No, he explained no, it he, much no, no, better. No, 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 no. How did I get Come it the on. first time he I've explained it 20 you. different ways. No, he doesn't because pay attention. I spent legit, we spent like a half hour trying to figure it out. I'm like, dude, I'm done. Like, leave me alone. Because always he talks about you got to use two hands and then use a circular <laughs> motion. <laughs> oh, my God. Do that again? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, oh, fuck, dude. Oh. Just can't believe I just learned how to retro. This is fucking awesome. How much of this is getting edited? 80% None of it. Nothing. Pure raw. YouTube. You're telling me I gotta watch like three hours of footage and then edit it? No way. Not. No, there's a few there's a few clips I think I'd have yeah, to he's, in it. he's been in it the whole there's time. There's a few yeah. clips. No, I think I'm getting it. I'm swallowing like how you said, and it's coming out there my nose. There you go. That's all you should have said, dude. I told you that. No, so you didn't. It's like you're swallowing it. No, 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 no. I no. can't pretend. I just how, how he said it was perfect. You never say anything about swallowing. Hey, you know why? You know why you listen to him? Because he wasn't your family. That's why. <laughs> That's probably why. Yeah, it's always the outside information that you actually listen. But to. hold on though, because here, I mean, I've we've smoked. I don't know, I don't know, a thousand cigars probably, literally, and all these conversations we've had with people who retro at different bars. He's like, oh, that's so, they're all so full of shit. Even a guy who it, he has a business in the Dominican Republic that that uh smokes he's like i talked to a master blender he's like you know all this flavor discussion about tasting flavors here's a guy who owns his own cigar company he's got probably what 20 lines yeah he's like you can't taste that i even asked the master blender he's like they're all full of shit and i'm like 
what are you talking about, man? You can definitely get notes off these things, right? And then they he's like, tastes completely different. Right? And he, 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 well, but the thing is, is that when you do it right, and then you yeah. actually don't try it fast, you know, hit it, get a good amount of smoke on the front end, you'll get like the hazelnut, like you'll get some of that. But like honestly, like in some of your cigars, especially like in the uh, Maduro, like I even get like the fruits that I get is almost like a raisin, like a like a. Yeah, no, that, that, the fig, yeah, yeah, yeah. the fig. Yeah, like yeah, you guys, yeah, yeah. you guys get that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I do too. So, yeah, raisin is a popular flavor among cigars. Dried fruit is what they would call it. Yeah, um, you're able to get in some cigars the citrus flavor that we talked about. Uh, there's some cigars from United where I get like a a cherry or a blackberry kind of flavor. So there's very very unique flavors, and a lot of the times it's not BS when they say I'm tasting the hazelnut or yeah. the you know the cherry or whatever it is. We're, we're missing we're missing one of our clan members here that uh you know he'd sit here and yeah Antonio he'll he'll give you he'll give you twenty different yeah, flavors he's really in depth literally with we'll, we'll, every flavor that you can get out of it yeah last time I was here we were hanging out the, the members only lounge I mean he starts smoking it and I'm like I'm like so tell me what you get tell me what you get he's like naming some obscure you know flavor notes and I'm like. Okay, he's I'm like man he just memorized the shit he's seen on Google that's why yeah, he's like I just picked yeah, up yeah, a yeah. chocolate always from Europe. before. Tastes like Swedish chocolate. Yeah, yeah he's like, I got hazelnut, but from the northeastern region. Yeah. <laughs> Spanish almonds. Yeah, he gets in the depth of it. We were just in there relaxing one day, and we were actually in your backyard. And he's like... Dragon fruit. I'm not even telling you, just smoke the cigar, bro. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to relax Enjoy here, it. I, so I'm not trying to hear your fucking chipmunk chip right now. <laughs> Let's enjoy ourselves. He's off. I mean, he loves, he's heavily into cigars, though. He knows but, his shit, like, that's he, for sure. Yeah, he he's like, learned his shit quick. Like, he got into it, and, like, he almost like he started reading books about it. Like, that's how much he started like, learning. Oh, he does. He, YouTube he, videos. He, 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 every cigar out there. He, 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 he knows the brands that, like, nobody knows about. He's like, hey, this is coming out. This is going to be big. You just watch another year or two, and it's like, like he's like, they do a great job with this. They do this different from other companies. Like, watch, they're going to blow up once people know about them. And, like, sure, I mean, sure enough, like, he's been spot on, you know? Yeah, like I think the wise man from uh, Foundation. Foundation Cigars yeah. just switched um, production. Yeah, they did a whole rebranding yeah. and, you know, so new like, blend. you know, save them. Save what you got because those are going to be worth some, you know. I'm the type of person, though, like, I don't like to let a collection yeah. just sit there yeah. and not smoke it, right? This guy's got... Yeah. And you guys want waters? I'll take some, yeah. Oh, so yeah. He, he I'll take another water. He, he's got... You, you got to tell the microphone that or no? Yeah. <laughs> can, can, can we get another water? Can you hear us when no, we're talking no, to Mike? His, his, his collection at home. Your headphones are on. You know, he's got the the Cohiba, uh, Mihike lineup just sitting there. I'm like, dude, light it up, man. Light it up. And uh, Purple Rain. I mean, what you got? Every single Opus series that are, you know, that's available. Purple Rain. Yeah. yeah. That's a hard there. one to come by. Yeah. Smoke it. Yeah. yeah. I, I found them online. I bought them. I overpaid like a motherfucker, like $80 a stick. But it's like they've been sitting in my humidor for two years. I remember, what did we grab? The 20 year, I think I brought them one night. Good night to smoke. Good good to celebrate tonight, huh? That's what I'm saying. (laughs) So I grabbed it, and the 20 year from Fuente was absolutely like, it's like I was in heaven smoking a cigar. That's how amazing it was. It just sat in my humidor at home, just aging for two years. We had a customer actually last week. We got that box from Jason Newman for Fuente. What was it called again? The collection. Oh yeah, the new one that just came two, out. Whatever it is, whatever. Yeah. Those woman numerals. It, it, it's pretty much a book of the family's entire story from beginning to end, and then there was two two different cigar boxes of every line that they they carry. Well, they one one cigar one each. Book. It was honestly, I actually had a video of it on my phone. I believe. The presentation was sweet, and we have a big Fuente fan that was in last night. He was like, "Did he buy the box? He yeah, bought it, yeah. The whole thing? Yeah. Wow. Well, that's the only way you can buy it. You can't." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure if you were selling them independently or, or no, no. as a collection. Check Mike you know, one, speaking, two, three. Speaking of like cigars, how was? How was? Uh, so I came with a bunch of opuses and. Thank you, very thank you so much. Yeah, appreciate, appreciate that. that. No Dang, yeah, that's beautiful. Did the Padron Fuente but collection get released like, yet or no? They waited. Yeah, yeah, they're coming out the, a similar thing with. Uh, they probably did that because the Padron uh, Fuente collection didn't probably release yet, right? They wanted to probably release something in the meantime. When we were when we were at a lounge uh, 
you know, literally probably within the last two weeks, we're sitting there and the owner of the lounge is like, hey, you guys should enter your name in for this contest. And I'm like, what contest? He's like, we're about to draw right now. But literally, he's probably got 500. Like, I, it's on video. He's got probably 500 slips in there. Hmm. So Donnie's sitting next to me. We'll both go put our name there. And it was uh, the first edition uh, uh, Davidoff that ever came out that included the um, tube inside the, the box. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. talking about? The very long one. Yeah, yeah, Forgot yeah. Which, what, what they call it. Um, anyway, I'll go back to it. The guy goes, he's got a customer comes in, just starts putting his hand in this bucket and starts drawing names. We literally, final second, put it in. We were the last people to put our names Thank in. Thank you so much. What do they draw? My name. It's probably because you're on top of the, you know. No, I mean, that thing was mixed well. I, I've had it on video. Literally pulls it out. $700 box. I open it right on the spot. Give three away right there. We smoked them the other night at my house. We had a bonfire watching them. We were like, we do that too. We'll, we'll just sit back. A lot of times when you come here, you just want to get away. So he comes out there, but literally light up a big fire, bring a big TV out. Have it, you know, we'll smoke cigars while we're watching it. Literally, start watching it. porn, and it was like the, <laughs> the night of our dreams. Yeah, but seriously, it was it was it was pretty crazy just to have a guy tell you, "Hey, put your name in the drawing." We're like, okay, well, you don't think it's gonna happen? The guy was. I can't like, believe he won. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, that yeah, we that happened to us with uh, Old Forester, uh, 150 year the birthday series. Not the yeah. birthday series. It's 150 year anniversary. I know, but it was like, wasn't it like? It a, wasn't a birthday series. Oh, no, 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 no. 150 year. Excuse me. So anyway, so <laughs> we put our name in a drawing, and we're joking around. We're like, you know, to the manager, like, yo, rig the competition, rig it. You know, and he's like, he's like, I can't. Like, I'm not even drawing it. I'm not even a part of it. I'm like, ah, oh, whatever. So they ended up pulling our name, and we ended up getting this bottle. And I think right off the bat, it was going for seven hundred dollars a bottle. We yeah. got it for free, and then uh, I think now it's going for twelve, maybe fifteen hundred. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah. You guys drank it right away? Oh, no. So, no, I still got so it. So they had a bottle. They had an open bottle um, at the bar. So we're like, well, let's save this bottle, and then we'll just try it. You know, because I think it was like 30 bucks or 40 bucks for a Yeah, single. it wasn't even outrageous. Yeah. Yeah. So you still have the bottle. So we still got the bottle. Yeah. I'm, what are you waiting for, man? I don't know. Like, just like when I was talking about him. When I get married, you know. I don't know. <laughs> well, why, why is it when you get married? Oh, it could be I'm when you get married, married first. Yeah. <laughs> we got to all get married together so we can I think you guys should arm wrestle right now. No, nah, no, nah, we're not doing that. <laughs> he thought about it. He's like, I'm, I'm Mark, Mark would win. Yeah. I, I have a bottle of Bovini 25 around. Bovini 25, huh? Oh, wow, yeah. that's so. Yeah, when, we, when, we, uh, when the restaurants were selling, we ended up, you know, collecting a lot of alcohol. <laughs> you know, we'd buy a lot of stuff, and uh, Mark got a Bovini 25. <laughs> we got all the different Casa, uh, uh, Clase Zools. Nice. We got all the different Clase Zools, and we had, like, I think we bought... You know, between all the stores, you know, four, eight, twelve, sixteen cases of Opus One. Wow. You know, so we have my uncle. Uh, we have Opus One since 1998. Mm. Two cases a piece every year. You know, and then, that's pretty dope. Yeah, the last five years or so, they allocated all of our stores to two cases, um, and then they upped it to four. So is your family so, still in the restaurant business now? No, they sold out yeah. everything. Huh? Yeah. So my my parents are retired. Uh, you know, they still do other stuff, but. Uh, my dad and his brothers are all retired from the business, from the restaurant business. How many restaurants did you guys have in Florida? Uh, when when it got sold, four. Nice, yeah. up to five at one point. Yeah, it was five. Yeah, I mean, but you know, where were you the other night? Wasn't your cousin on something too, or no? Or yeah, my cousin has uh, pizzeria. You know, little Vinny's. It was amazing, yeah. by the way. Yeah, great food. Yeah, amazing. The muscles. Yeah, I mean, brother. but how many over time? Ten locations, maybe like. You know, from different areas? Yeah. Something like that? Yeah, because we had one Daytona, um, and that one actually caught fire. And then we had one, uh, Hofner Conway, which... <laughs> Trisha. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew that, yeah, I knew that was coming. It was why? Because I'm Albanian? Is that what you're saying? No. Yes, that's exactly why. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, then, and then, you know, we had one, uh, Hofner Conway, which they opened up... That's getting edited. No, that's right. <laughs> Were so, these Italian restaurants? Italian yeah. restaurants. Yeah, I like to tell people. Everyone always, like, you're Albanian, you own an Italian restaurant. I'm like, hey, listen, Italians invented the food, while Albanians perfected it. You know oh, I mean? very good. Yeah, that's what they're going to say. Very good. Don't tell, don't tell Ella I said that. <laughs> she's part Albanian. Don't that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, good. she's good. She won't get Can't it. Can't offend her. <laughs> did, you ever, did you ever hear a story about Calabria in Italy and how it got its name? You know who no. Joe, Joe DeGuardi is in New York? Joe DeGuardi, he's the senator. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You never, yeah, yeah. you never seen the video with him talking in front of a crowd and talking no, about Calabria. No. So he talks about Skenderbeg. Yeah. 
Yeah. And the the you know after he had died of what malaria or whatever it was, um, his family had to flee. Otherwise, you know the Ottomans were gonna wipe them out, right? So they they crossed that small series of water uh, into uh, Italy, and you know he talked about how the first thing they did was build a castle right on the water, right on the ocean, right yeah. on the ocean side, right? And that castle was always known as the castle of the Albanians, right? In the region of what is now, you know, Calabria, right? So how he, he was basically correlating how Calabria got its name. And he asked, you know, the crowd, where do you think this name came from? Because there's no definition in Italy is what he was saying, or in, in Italian, of what that yeah, means. Yeah, yeah. But now if you ask yourself in Albanian, how do you say castle? You know? Kalaya, right? And how are the uh, Albanians called in Italy? They're called Arbaresh, you know? So Kalaya Beria, and, you know, that's how he basically said that name was actually created. During that time, Italy took, took in a lot of Albanians because of that reason, like, to protect them. Like, it went hand in hand. You know, obviously, they did something for them, and then that was a return favor back, you know what I mean? And they basically kind of just, they gave them that village. You know what I mean? You walk through, they say, like, there's videos. It's a whole region. Videos. The yeah. whole entire section of Italy, you walk through, it's like it's Albanian flags, not Italian flags. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they, they have, they still have. It's a cooler flag anyway. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, we, we have the coolest flag in the, in the well, world. It, it's, sure, yeah. The, the thing is too though, is that the people in that region, they speak the old Albanian. That's going to get out of Like you, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be able to understand them. Yeah. But like the, that's like the traditional, <laughs> original Albanian language. Like it's, still truly spoken to this day is there. You know, and it's, I mean, these I names mean, never you know, existed back, like, you know, Italy and Albania. You know, and, and, and then you know, start changing the words around and in time. But, like, that village is, like, so, like, old. Like, they probably, if you're lucky, if you catch a TV in that village. Like, that's how, like, old school it is. You know what I mean? Dude, like, I, I, was, I was sitting, very traditional. I was sitting, I was in Positano on the Malfi Coast right there. Mm -hmm. And this guy walks up to me. And we're at the beach with my wife and my baby. And I'm, he's like, uh, where are you from? I'm like, I'm from the U.S. He goes, I'm like, where are you from? I can tell you, 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 you don't. Your parents were like, where are they from? I go, I'm Albanian. He goes, I thought so. He goes, my wife over there is Albanian. Now we're Italian. We're from Italy. Yeah. He goes, but we've got a thousand years in the village that she's from. They still speak it today. Yeah. You yeah. know, he could just tell by looking at me. So, but that was really interesting. It's probably your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in the eyes. He probably seen you talking with your hands. The two-hander. <laughs> See my big Albany Eagle tattoo. Gave it away. Nice show. <laughs> I don't have one. I'm just playing. That's a shock. <laughs> I don't have one either. Mark's got one, though. I got one. Die. Someone's got to get it. Yeah. He's got one on his butt cheek. Yeah. <laughs> don't ask me how I know. <laughs> I'm both butt cheeks, and he can make them flat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I just had the best That was good. Bit. That was I good. I go shake my hip left to right, <laughs> and all of a sudden I start flying. <laughs> All right, we're definitely going to do some serious editing, though, okay? I mean, record. this has been a four-hour podcast. Yeah, it's a long one. What, what do we have now? Uh, two hours, 23. Oh, wow. Wow. seriously? Yeah, we're going about like 20 minutes before. We're about like three hours. Yeah, three hours. It was wow. close. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. yeah. And we're, and we're, we're just, we're just live and you're having fun. Huh? We're just getting started. <laughs> what happened to you? You only had 30 minutes, huh? <laughs> oh, I did. A steak at I got <laughs> a cigar, a cigar, a cigar. Typically, how long do you guys do your podcast for? Yeah. 20 minutes. 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, about like 45 minutes to an hour. Nice. Yeah. We might cut this up. Oh, the shortest one I've ever done was like 30 minutes. Never. Maybe. Yeah. Never. I said never. No, we have to cut it to about 30. You, you start to lose the crowd. No, after. not 30. But I mean, if you keep it interesting, you're going to lose them. Like when we do gay shit like Dude, what you me talking, 30 it keeps them interested. Just off of your, no, no, no. Your, your so jokes. You're, you're right. But like we do like, you know, YouTube shorts, you know, the yeah. TikTok. So oh, we so do, we do cut that, it up. Yeah. <laughs> How does that rapper taste? What kind of I smoke the rapper. It's all good. Uh, gain, uh, Industrial uh, factory. Gain glue, chemicals. Paper, glue. <laughs> ink. He's Burnt ink. Sample. Red 40. You guys got anything else you want to say before I do the, the clothes? No. Well, I do have one thing to say. Well, oh, here we go. Go for it. So we, we raced a long time ago. <laughs> Well, this running? is completely irrelevant. Just for the record, I no, no, no. This is all guys it podcast. needs to be out there. Everything's relevant on the podcast. Go for it. All right, say it. All right. Long story short. Hold on, hold on. Let me tell. Let me give you the background. <laughs> We're on a podcast. Long story. It doesn't got to be long, long story. story short. You're it's right. Got to be long story. Be long story. My wife and I 
we're eating Italian food and literally you're at Giovanni's chicken. Par. I was going to say that. Hey, I'm not. Even, I'm not even bullshitting you. Like chicken. Par. This guy still remembers nine years ago what he oh, ate. I, I can even tell you the shirt he had on because I'll, I'll tell you what it said on there. What's it? There's a video. Oh yeah, I'll find it. There's a video. So literally, I you know I'm right down the street from where he lives at the time, um, and I was like, uh, you know, you don't have Italian food and and leave feeling good, right? You're you're full, right? So um, I'm like, I called Donnie, hey, where you at? He's like, oh, I'm working out at the football field. Like, you know, Al Bundy never left Polk High. He never left. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great reference. No, he's great not reference. He's not laughing. Wait, so you know he's not laughing. <laughs> Al Bundy. <laughs> he's not laughing. He's so dumb, dude. <laughs> he's not laughing because, you know, there's a correlation. He's probably thinking I'm the one who still talks about football and ice cream. No, I mean. <laughs> But, yeah, but anyway, my man, funny. my man's walking around like literally doing laps. I think he was just getting married or something at the time. So. No, I wasn't. I wasn't even. I didn't, no, you're, that's what I'm saying. You were just. You were. No, I don't even think I met Laura. No, no, you. No, 100. percent You did. You got married only a few years after I did. So anyway, he's got this shirt on. It says Beast, and here is Big Beefcake just walking around the field, you know. And I thought he was sprinting, but he was fast walking. No, I'm just playing. But anyway, so <laughs> we get out there and we start talking shit a little bit, you know. No, no, we were talking shit through text. Oh, were we? Okay. Well, well, no, you didn't even know I was coming. He, oh, he, he, didn't, he didn't even know I was coming. <laughs> what do I, I don't know what to that. believe. So, you're, so, you're right. no, no, listen, he didn't even know I was coming. I mean, it was, it was a long time. It was, I don't know, several years ago. Was it several years ago? Ten years ago. Dude. Ten years ago. Well, okay, let's just call it ten. Yeah. How long have you been married for? Yeah, yeah. How long have you been married for? Since uh, 2015. I almost forgot. Yeah, so nine years, for ten years, right there. So, anyway, he doesn't know I'm there, so I'm, I'm laughing. I'm kind of watching him work out there with my wife. I'm like, okay, I'm going to walk on the field. So he's like, I'm like, yeah, you want you want to race? He's like, yeah, you don't want none of this. You know, I'm literally, I'm in dress shorts and a shirt, and you know. Keep in mind, I already been working out for three hours, so you're I'm warm, absolutely bro. I just exhausted. had this big ass meal. So anyway, That's both excuses? excuses. Oh, That's dude, fine, we yeah. get there. On both sides. So the the truth is, I really don't know who won at the time, but I can tell you, I popped my hamstring in the middle of running this forty. <laughs> literally, I felt a snap. His wife was recording. It, it was it was honestly funny. Run. It was hilarious. So, but I'm, we're running, dude. We're, I mean, like two big fellas running, you know, we're running down the, you know, running the 40. The ground there. was shaking. <laughs> so all of a sudden, I just feel like, well, dead in Alaska. Like the, within five K-Sons. yards, I feel this snap. Because I had probably two steps. I was basically almost looking back what at him. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> so, you had me two steps. Are you okay, it was like, dude? I was like looking back at him, you know? No, you weren't so, looking back so, at so shit. So anyway, I felt the snap. I'm like, oh, shit. So all of a sudden... We crossed the Wait, finish line. Did you go faster? I, I was in so much pain. No, I, it slowed me down. That's what. That's the only reason why you got like head to head with me. <laughs> I was in so much pain. <laughs> great. I was in you so much pain. Though. I popped it. I yeah. popped my hammy right, and I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh my god. And now I couldn't even like enjoy. It. He's talking. I beat you, and I'm like, damn. I was like, did he really win? You know. All of a sudden, I'm in the car, and I'm like getting there. I'm like, I'm like, let me see the camera and I look at it. I'm excruciating pain. All of a sudden, I look. I'm like. I won. I sound like him when he won Call of Duty the first time. I call. He's like, "No, you didn't." To this day, we haven't settled this. So I just wanted to settle for the podcast. We'll, we'll do a cigar guy's review of the video, <laughs> and we'll give you our opinion. You want to do a live rate? No, just play. No, we're we, not. Don't, don't, have to, don't tempt us. I will we'll have to live. point out that uh, Donnie buys my cigars, so I think he won that competition. Oh. Uh, tr- <laughs> trust me, I I, I, I won. He can say whatever he wants. I will need I'll to see find, the video. I, I gotta find it it's somewhere. It's, yeah, so, so what actually happened? You said you popped your hamstring. I popped my hammy, like literally, and I made him finish I the race. Up, and beat me. You, did you mean pull it? Yeah, yeah, adrenaline, yeah, adrenaline, adrenaline boost. Are you, are you, no, no. What I'm telling tendon. you, when I say I popped it, like I literally heard a pop. It was like so you ripped a tendon in the muscle. I have no idea. I, I never went. He didn't, that rip, guy he didn't rip shit, dude. I didn't. He care. probably After farted and slowed him down. I would have gone fast. He's like, oh, I was gonna say it should speed you up. You know, lifting him in the air a little bit. All that pasta and chicken parm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, so we still talk shit about it 10 years later. <laughs> Literally 10 years later. But for the record, I won. <laughs> Who won for real? You really think he won? Well, you have to find that video and send it to them so that way they can post it with no. the little... We got to do. That would get a lot of views. What we have to do is a rematch. Oh. Dude, after a few more drinks, but a rematch. I'm old, bro. Like, I'm I know, old my now, back's fucked know? up. <laughs> <laughs> excuses, the excuses are coming. I got a sciatica now. Excuses, excuses. I want to see you guys run. And there you go. Video. We, we want to see you guys I run, arm you, wrestle. You guys run in your. Like, we'll do a we'll go in the parking lot. Right now. Olympics. I wouldn't want to see this. That would be great to finish the podcast. Let's do it. Honestly, you're looking at the win right now. Listen, 
I think you guys should seriously, you and your suit coat, everyone go out there and just run a 40 yard dash. Well, well, then the what? Then they eat the fucking cement on their way back to Dude, Florida? It would be hilarious to at least have it on video. A good way to end I'm gonna it. show up to you the know, event with like a tooth missing. Yard dash ten, <laughs> 10 years later, probably. We'll show the crutches. <laughs> I just want to see him run the sport coat. <laughs> He'll take it off. I've actually done it. I've raced in a suit before, so just so you know. I'll do it just for you. Uh, full, I, I never about. I full never disclosure: He raced in the suit. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Thanks for that info. If we if we race, <laughs> who who did you beat that time? I put money on who would win. Who'd you beat that time in your just suit? Bet on Jared. You you will make money. I will win. You'll win. If we run, we, I will win. You, you will not. Dude, win. I don't know, Against man. Me? I'm not saying oh, wow. anything. Did you? I already won. <laughs> don't let Francis pick on you guys. And then Listen, you guys start I think you got it. The no cigar comment. guys are now broken You'll up. Win he, gives, yeah. he gives your Now it's the cigar guy. Yeah. <laughs> this guy, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Whoever wins gets their name first instead Ooh. of uh, Ooh. Alex. Now Alexander Gonzalez. Gonzalez. I love it. I'm going to change the spelling of my name now. You should. That'd be pretty I'm surprised cool. you guys haven't given the official Gonzalez title yet. Yeah, what kind of friends are you? I'm going to start hanging out here. What's your last name? <laughs> Burroughs. Bird Eye. <laughs> Bird Eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Honestly, it'll ancient be, descendant of Skenderbeg. It'll be official for you once you get a Bane Eagle tattooed on your butt cheeks. No, you, you know what, guys? I'm half sorry. Half. These two half have half. to get all Bane Eagle tattoos. He's got a great artist. Look at the ink he's got. Who's your That's artist? True. Yeah, him and Mark are gonna have to compare. You guys definitely need all be they're sweet tattoos. Well, here, let bro. me turn around real quick. <laughs> <laughs> that we're gonna have to drop. Try out. <laughs> drop and give me twenty. Do you have ink or no? No. Nah. You have ink? I don't. No, he's the only one. You're the only one, yeah. dude. You don't have an eagle tattoo, man. Waiting, you don't have anything either. You don't have it either. Took a shit. How do you guys know? You act like you got oh, it. <laughs> I was gonna say something. <laughs> Found one in Costa Rica. That's all I know. <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, I do. I did wear that thong, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> On that note, we'll end up wrapping it up. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Cigar Guys. A very special episode. Uh, thank you to Francis, Donnie, and Chris. Uh, for being on here, thank you for hosting us at Don Criso's uh, Thank you for coming. Room. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it's been fantastic, guys. Of course, man, it's been fantastic uh, hospitality you guys have given us. It's you know. Congrats amazing. on the new cigar. It's, it's amazing. It's going to do well. There's, oh damn! Best 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 wishes on uh, <laughs> classic <laughs> Albanians. <laughs> we'll see you later. <laughs> Take some mic. <laughs> Right, I knew we'd go home empty-handed. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the latest episodes. Looking for short-form content? Check out all our social media accounts in the description below.